What's up, guys? Welcome to Kind of Funny Star Wars in Review. That's right. We are ranking and reviewing every movie in the Star Wars franchise. I'm Tim Geddes. This is Andy Cortez. That's Kevin Coelho. There's a lot of Over questions there, I have right now. Starting Why is it just a suitcase <laughs> well, on the floor? Today's right, sponsored by yeah. Away. Oh, okay. I was so but, confused. But right yeah, before, leaving. I was like, this this is yeah. it. This I was broke like, there's up. no yeah, way yeah. that like Kevin would allow a random big block of things. <laughs> <to be laughs> <away. laughs> but then the other thing that was confounding to me was that Kevin subtly looked over at me, and as I locked eyes with him, he just went. <laughs> yeah. I, was like, I was like, "What is that? About? What was that in reference to?" You bring it up your doc of the plot. Like, it's I not, wonder. It's no, I don't even... think it was about that. I, th- I don't know if it was about anything. I think, I think it's about the wanted... company. I think he's like, "I'm he's ready to leave." The life. <laughs> life. I'm tired. Oh man, this is Star Wars in review. Every week we review one of the Star Wars movies. We're also doing Terminator in, in review concurrently Ooh. right now. Um, so this Friday will be Terminator Dark Fate closing out the Cameron verse of, of Terminator. It's good. I like it a lot. I've seen the screener tonight. Oh yeah, we are. We are. It's I excited. could not be less excited. <laughs> it's getting pretty decent reviews. Is it? Yeah. Is it? They're yeah. saying it's the third best solid movie. middle yeah. road Terminator we'll movie. We'll figure, figure that out we'll later. Today we're talking list. about Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. You can get the show live on Twitch.tv/slash Kind of Funny, or you can get it on podcast services by searching for Kind of Funny Reviews. But if watching videos more your thing, cool. YouTube com slash kind of funny roosterteeth.com we like to give you options including ad free options on patreon.com slash kind of funny just Whoa. like our patreon producers al tribesman and david mintel the predator and the mind free mind free predator show me a trick i love that you're Daddy wearing Bob. a lizzo shirt nick it's the shit i got at the concert last night <laughs> i love that you went to a lizzo concert nick. it was so fun it, it was is so fun. it is such an interesting it's like, a great shirt it's it a tour looks shirt too. very cheaply made oh, yeah. but <laughs> also it uses shiny ink on the bottom yeah Ooh, that's and i like it <laughs> has a little oh tour dates God. on the back yeah. and that was by the way the last date in her tour I thought you were saying the last concert well. I'll ever go to. <laughs> no, I don't know. no, no, no. The Lizzo concert was perfect. We can talk about it. Yeah. Like <laughs> Star Wars Episode podcast, 2, podcast, Attack podcast. of the Clones, Whatever. released on May 16th, 2002. Once again, written and directed by George Lucas himself. Hell yeah, dude. Um, a budget of $115 million. The same exact number as Phantom Menace. Hmm. Huh. Um, I wonder if there was anything in the contract about that. The box office returns not so similar, Nick. Okay. Episode one made $1.027 billion. <laughs> um, this one says, the film was a box office success, making over $649 million worldwide, Whoa. which is still a lot. Still it made a lot. half as much almost? But it did make half as much. Remember, there was the 3D re-release that bumped it up about 120. Oh, the 3D re-release of Phantom Menace? Yeah. yeah. Yep. So there is, there's a lot there. But I was pretty shocked to see these numbers. Right. Um, however, it also became the first Star Wars film to be outgrossed in its year of release, placing third domestically and fourth worldwide. Wow. Interesting. Bunch of fake fans out there, dude. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Commit. Why don't you just love it regardless of the quality of it? <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you just do that? <laughs> uh, Runtime of two hours and 22 <laughs> minutes. Fuck it, eh? Why? <laughs> Why? 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 <laughs> and at the time of release, I think it's the it was the longest Star Wars at that point. Mm-hmm. You right. know what? I'll and be I'll be it. honest. I still think it's the longest Star Wars. <laughs> sure feels that way. Oh man! Uh, before we get into the plot, uh, let's talk with before we we talk about what we thought. What did we like about this movie? What are the positives? I promised that we were going to talk Ooh, about. I the got, oh, I, I got know, one too. I, know, I have a good one too. Go I wrote it down. Um, when they're in the middle of the arena. And Anakin's like, we came to save you. And Obi-Wan's like, good job. The only good part of the movie. There's, that's my yeah. only favorite. That's my like only, that? The only I like part that. I like. It's really, There's, really funny. There are a couple back and forths like that in the movie. That's one of them. There's another one where... Um, she go like I wrote it down. We'll get to it, but like mm-hmm. there's there's another real quick thing that she says to him when they're like fighting, where she's like, "Do you call this uh, oh, negotiation?" And he says, "I call this aggressive negotiations." So I was like, "Okay, that's kind of a cute callback." Yeah. They have a couple moments where I I almost want to like not give credit to George Lucas. I almost want them to be like we improv- improvise those because they actually there's there's just one or two moments where where they actually break character and have an actual human moment. And I'm like, oh, this is that that's nice. And I also liked her headband in one of the scenes. Okay, uh, okay that's cool. it. The 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 also the uh, the pod that Obi Wan uses that was for one of deep mine. space travel. That was one of mine. I it's love so it. Cool. It's so cool. It's so practical. The that, ships that can't necessarily go it? to hyperspace, yeah. so they need the little ring to like transfer them, and then they get oh, out. Cool. I thought that was really cool. Pretty cool. I and I I know this is gonna be a hot take, but I like the Jenga Fett armor. I yeah, think, dude. Yeah, that shit looks dumb. Blue? Yeah. Okay. I think the blue. No, you know why? Because in, in my brain, I'm I'll like, stick with green. you know what's cooler than green? Blue. My yeah. favorite color. It's blue. Yeah, it's always been your. It's always been your. It's always been your. Favorite favorite yeah, I started. Insane. No one like that. Um, I I think that the uh, the love theme across the oh, stars. I love that. Is fantastic. I love one that. one 
of the top tier Star Wars songs. Absolutely. And, and I, I like how much it comes back. I want to Duel of the Fates. Like, they, they knocked it out of the park. They did. Those. They, re- they really did. And that theme comes back into this a little bit when he's riding his dope ass Harley out to kill the yeah, which, Tusken Raiders. Which is. <sighs> no, no, we're, we'll, we'll talk about that doesn't later. Matter. Uh, uh, I was gonna say one scene that I I liked or one moment and like and I know that like this is not a popular thing but I really like Yoda fighting. Dude, it was it was I, hype and they built it up correctly in yep, the sense in, of just this movie, I wish, making it have that yeah. like oh shit moment. My problem is this is a movie, not a YouTube video. Sure, <laughs> and it's but man, like, yeah. when he comes out and everyone's on the ground, Dooku's standing there, and he pulls his little lightsaber out. And it's a little lightsaber. It fits in his little hand. Tiny, he made it. <laughs> it's like when dogs. I wear, loved like, it so <laughs> much. And I remember in the movie theaters. Obviously, we could all tell it's a bad movie. But I remember walking out and being like, "Fuck, we just saw Yoda fight." And I was all about yeah, that. I remember. Right, you, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say I'm right there with you because mm-hmm. by the time we get, I got halfway through this movie taking notes, and I was like, "Oh my god, there's another hour left." And I forgot. I thought this scene for some reason was in the next one. And we get, we get to that, I was like, I was like, oh, because I know he well, it's future sports, everyone's yeah. in movies. But I was like, oh, right, this is in this. It gives me something to look forward to in hour three of this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anything I can't, else? I can't really think of anything. Barry, Barry, what you got? Uh, yeah, the I, I put up a post on Twitter the other day of just like, yeah, like half of the movie is the Anakin and Padme shit, and I hate like that's uh, a mess, but the the stuff that I do like uh, in this movie is the whole like Obi Wan and his adventure and like what he goes off to do. I think it's cool like how they build up the mystery. This, yeah, this yeah. mystery of uh, like <laughs> I agree. like at the beginning where they track down I forget her name, but uh, Zam. Uh, is that her, or the this, the the uh, shape changer? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's Zam. Or so Zam. when she's like, it's a bounty hunter called, and like Django kills her and stuff, and you see him fly away. Like yeah. they there are moments throughout uh, like. Obi Wan's journey of trying to track down Django that are really cool. When he actually straight up meets Django like face to face, and uh, they're just like kind of being very civil and polite in front of this like uh, different species because they know that this is not the right time or setting to fucking go down and throw down and shit. Yeah. And I, I I really liked that. And then their fight scene. I love all the Obi Wan stuff in this movie. That's, I but that's just me. I do too, and I like I I there are some great fun elements of that fight scene with him and, yeah. and Jango. Like I like some of the choreography where he actually uses his grappling hook to like grab him and yeah. pull the yeah. And then like when o- Obi Wan comes down and Jango's like uh, like being pulled down as well. Like there's a lot of cool parts of that. Uh, fight it's, scene. there are that, a lot of cool choreographed moments. I think in in a lot of the fight scenes there yeah. are there are moments where things happen. You're like oh that's really cool. I re- I liked Anakin having the two lightsabers. I wish it lasted more than um, five three seconds. frames. Yeah, um, but like the same three frames that were in the trailer. It's like, oh my god, give us, give us a little bit. Oh, the, uh, I'm also the, si- the seismic bombs. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was the amazing. coolest fucking right sound it design. Happened, I remember it, and I got really excited. And Do then we love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the the sound effect of the bomb was awesome. But also the sound effect of the lasers from the, the is that the slave one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If it's not, it's like Slave Zero because that's the exact same ship. Yeah. So yeah. whatever that ship. Uh, the 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 way that the laser sound when it's when targeting it's tar- the little red him, ones, yeah, freaking really cool. Yeah, um, and yeah. unlike any other effects, the yeah, seismic more. charge though, it reminds me of uh, in, in uh, uh, Prometheus when mm. Charlie Seren is running away from the, the from big the thing as it's coming down, and it's like just you're like run, run sideways, run to the side, run sideways. sideways. Same thing with the seismic charge, like bam, like all right, let me just go down because this wave is only going out towards <laughs> like in one axis. That's you fair. Know? Um, I'm also gonna give a shout out to Christopher Lee, who I just love. And I don't love the Dooku character, but I yeah. love I like him and I like his demeanor and I like his voice. Yeah, when he's and he has talk- really good screen presence. It's just the words that were given to come out of his <laughs> mouth are lame as shit, and I have no <laughs> fucking idea yeah. who he is or why he's in this the entire time. So he was great at Sodomon though. He actually was. He, was. he actually was. Fantastic. I forgot. God damn it, Andy. <laughs> uh, Stop bringing everything back to Lord of the Rings. Do I want Lord of the Rings? <laughs> God damn one, it. Wait, one more moment before we move on that I, I do want to put attention to. It's not great, but I think it's cool. I think the idea was really cool. When all the like Jedi's are coming out to fight, and we see it's so poorly so done. Ma- I, it, it is. And we see <laughs> it how is. none of them have held a lightsaber in their life before. It's like the it, one it where is. she goes, "How do I launch this lightsaber?" And then it, it above her head, it, go, it it extends, and then she brings it down, and then Force pushes nothing. <laughs> that was my favorite part. He was just like, "Do some of this shit," and she goes. And but, we don't see what she force pushes? <laughs> Do some of this shit. But like, the idea behind the it idea is, is fantastic. Cool, I it's think. just so dumb. The there's a lot, there's a lot of cool ideas. Yeah, a lot of cool ideas here. 
A lot of cool ideas. ideas. Um, Little, uh, may the facts be with you here. The film's working title was Jar Jar's Great Adventure. Oh, Lord. (laughs) If I had to work on that, I'd be like, I love Star Wars, but I have to quit. I can't work on any movie that 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 continues Jar Jar, and I love how little he's in this movie, by the way. And but what a, a shift, a pivotal what a role, quick shift. an Senator. absolute pivotal role. Like, All right, he, let's get to the plot. It's time for the plot. <laughs> there you go. That was oh, the worst. God, <laughs> you feel alright? He's good. He's good. He's just geared. Please don't something. click the dislike button. Like the video. Like the video. Like the video. Like it! Like it! Ah, <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. We start, of course, with the iconic scroll. The Senate has gone to shit. Now a bunch of solar systems are bouncing from the Republic. The Separatist movement under the leadership of Count Dooku, would have been nice if we met him at all in the last movie or if there was a reference to him, has made it difficult for the limited number of Jedi to keep galactic peace. Queen Amidala got demoted to senator because she let Sidious by, be emperor, is returning to the Senate to vote on the creation of an army of the Republic. Hard to believe they went for thousands of years um, as the guiding force with only a small amount of wizards to keep people in line. Doesn't matter. There are literally 10,000 star systems. Small amount of wizards. Very they go like small. this. 10,000. They make a reference to 10,000 systems later. And there's like 15 Jedi that are supposed to be peacekeepers for it. Doesn't matter. Uh, Wait, real quick. Also, she didn't like get demoted. Like no, no, no. Later we figure out that her term limit's up. Yeah. But they have that nice fun throwaway line. My term limit was up as queen. It's like why all I'm did, saying is this: maybe that, Thanos was right. Maybe that entire to yeah. walk of Anakin and her, where they they had that. It's like you said, there's some things that you need to show us and not tell us. There's some things you can tell us and not show us. That's one of them. You told us in the scroll. No, no, you that's, told us. Yeah. There. So the, the, that's this is whole movie, right? It's like George Lucas went to the best film school on the planet and just decided to forget every single thing about screenwriting he ever learned. This movie is the definition of tell don't show. Mm-hmm. Every single scene that's not an action scene is exposition that's telling us what other characters should be doing. Barrett nailed it right on the head. The only scenes that don't do that are the Obi-Wan scenes where he's actually going on a mystery and he's the only person that does anything in this movie to forward the plot. But even then, he has to ask five different times whether or not he should go look for this Camino system. And then he goes to Yoda and Yoda's like, go look for the Camino system. He's hey, like, I fucking know I should. I don't have there. these dumbass kids tell you to go, you <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> but we just had a scene right before. Anyway, we'll get to that. Anyway, uh, Amidala lands on Naboo with R2 and someone Can't blows. they all get murdered. <laughs> Someone blows her ass up. Thankfully, it was just Kira Knightley's sister or something. I don't know who that person Rose was. Rose Byrne, dude. Was that Rose, Rose Byrne? Byrne? That was Rose. No, Rose Byrne is later. Oh, sorry. Rose yeah, Byrne's yeah, yeah. later. That girl, though. This is, remember uh, we brought up the Bechtel test where it's just like, do two women ever talk to each other about anything that's not love that's or this whatever? Oh, no. This is the first time in Star Wars so far that two women speak to each other. Holy fuck. Period. That's wow. pretty. I'll tell you what right the now. first slide of the movie, baby. That's a right. when, um, terrible example. Something. When okay, hold Pro- on. Like I progress hurts. When when the beginning of this movie is happening, and I'm watching it last night, and also I'm watching it, and then I get kicked off of the voodoo, and it's like somebody else is logged in, and I'm like, fucking hell. You am texted I about, me at one thirty. Am I about to buy this oh. movie for twenty dollars? But luckily, it was just Kevin checking twelve ninety nine. So it's uh, totally fine. No, it was me watching part of it because I didn't wa- finish watching it till this morning. <laughs> And then you texted me, and I was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> um, so when homegirl is like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, a senator. And she's like, no, no, no. And she's like, I failed you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I got to imagine that every Star Wars fan that hated Phantom Menace that was there on day one for Attack of the Clones, when that moment happened, they are like, fuck, again? Like, they got us again. Like, this sucks already. It's just, awesome. Uh, like, oh no, man. I, I, I got to imagine everybody just like, holy shit, here we go again. Dude. Here we what, go. Two what, did, uh, hours of this. what did she fail? I feel like she succeeded very well. Yeah, I think she did her job. Well. Like, yeah, her job is to die. Her job. She just felt bad. It's like when my hand got caught in a, in a treadmill and it was bleeding all everywhere, and then my, I was telling my mom, I'm sorry. You know, she's like, why well, are yeah, you sorry? But it's you probably put your hand in the treadmill. Yeah, but if I you're, put it on if top your of a job... basketball and the treadmill sucked in the basketball with my hand yeah. in between it, it was like, But sh- like, were you trying to see how fast you get the basketball to shoot out? I was trying to dribble. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But also, if your job was to stick your hand in treadmills, then you did your job. Sure, you're right. Her you job is to it. put herself in danger because she's the fucking yeah. decoy. Yeah. Why, why not just decoy senator? not have that happen? You just fly... In the other ship, and don't tell anyone you're... It doesn't matter. Yep. Uh, Padme is safe, and so is R2, thank God. Up in Sidious' thank pimp God. pad. Up in Sidious' pimp pad, the Jedi once again confirm something that's already been stated, that they can't protect the entire galaxy with 14 Jedi. 
We already we just said that, but we'll, let's the have one more scene. The Jedi and, and Barrett, you you might know more about this with like Clone Wars stuff, but. So there's the 14 Jedi, but then they're trading a bunch of kids. Is there some in between? There's hundreds of Jedi. Okay. Yeah. I'm saying 14 because we only ever... Someone someone in the chat said that there was 10,000 at their peak. But, like, that's not a big number. But it's... The the, the, the big problem with the universe is that it's either too big or too small. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, we are trying to do something that... That that col- that that encompasses the entire galaxy, and that's just too. It's too big of a concept for a, an audience to wrap its head around. So the idea of having a even the idea of having a Galactic Republic army that's got say two hundred thousand troops seems kind of paltry when you think about how big a galaxy is, right? Especially when you talk about ten thousand systems that could potentially have billions of people per planet per system. Yeah. So it's the idea behind this. They're Much playing with some planet, interesting so. concepts. But the idea behind it still seems it's it just seems silly. Even that and the fact that there could be a galactic empire at all, that I mean you'd need millions of ships, right? You'd need like billions of people of, of soldiers to actually keep peace in a galaxy. And at this point they don't have any soldiers. Which is weird because yeah. the Republic's been around for a thousand years. Yeah. And I guess the Jedi are sort of like the soldiers or the peacekeepers. But they're, but like, they're not because they're yeah. not really controlled by the Republic. They're just sort of like like, no one really tells them what to do. Yoda's kind of, like, in charge, kind of. Yeah, it right? seems like they have some sort of symbiotic relationship where, like, they come, and, like, the Senate will come and be like, hey, we need this. And, like, the Jedis will be like, all right, we'll do it. Because they're kind of, the prob- they're kind of like monks, right? They're like uh, some sort of priests. It's yeah, like the Catholic Church. I guess it's like the Catholic I mean, Church. They can't get married. I, I, yeah. Yeah, Why? Can they? We don't know. Yeah, uh, Padme comes yeah. in and accuses Dooku of trying to assassinate her, but Dooku was once a Jedi and couldn't kill anyone. You, you can't, he can't kill anyone. Why does he have two names? Why does he have two names? So in this movie, he's just Tyrannus. No, in this one, oh, he's, he's Dooku. Dooku. Yeah, in this one, he's Dooku but and Tyrannus. And he calls him Tyrannus, but he doesn't call him Darth Tyrannus. But no, but earlier, when they're talking about him, they're like, oh, Tyrannus would never do that. No, they, they say Tyrannus Dooku. is introduced way later. Yeah. Uh, Papa, yeah, Palpatine uh, recommends that Padme be placed under the security of the Jedi. Padme hates this, but Palpatine suggests that maybe she would be more comfortable if she were guarded by an old friend. Anakin Skywalker. And then uh, we cut to Anakin hanging upside down as a group of Anderson soldiers close in on him. Blasters at the ready. Re- uh, realizing his old friend and master Obi-Wan Kenobi is nowhere to be found. He forces... No, none of this shit happened. Yeah. They're just in an elevator. They are just in an elevator. And <laughs> They're man, in a goddamn <laughs> elevator. <laughs> CG elevator. <laughs> okay. We had a perfect fuck... We haven't seen Anakin Skywalker as an adult yet. Why would we not have... You know when Thor Ragnarok opens... And Thor is fucking hanging upside down in a chain and fucking hell, and he has to fight the hell monster. What a great way to introduce your hero in a yeah, bad it was place. Great. It was what? Great. How is he going to get out of this place? You know the how they got out of the friend? fucking elevator? They just waited for the doors to open. Yeah, yeah, they did, dude. In this elevator, this scene Why? of them talking is supposed to be like, oh look, they're bros. And it's the only moment in this whole movie that we get them being bros, and I hold on to it so hard, where I'm like, yeah. I want to like this. I want this dialogue to be like fun and like, oh, they have history. It's not. It's, it's really awkward, it's and crazy. Obi-Wan's like, <laughs> no, he's, he's like, uh, last time I saved you, you were in the blah, blah, blah. He's like, he's like I <laughs> saved fun you. Fun fact, last time he saved him, he was, um, they were with the Anderson soldiers on uh, in a border dispute. I was like, that sounds cool. Wish I could have seen that. Wish the whole this scene would have started with him saving him instead of telling me that he saved him. Yeah, like how cool would that have been if he's like, "Hey, we're in this big with this bad dispute, and nobody, Obi Wan's like caught on this thing, and I gotta come save him." <laughs> this scene is set up yeah, for them to be bros, and then Anakin turns his back on, on so uh, Obi Wan so fucking fast. <laughs> now, now here's the thing, Nick. Here's the fucking thing for you. Can I get some wigging out? Oh God, is it a wig? I don't know. We're wigging out with Scarpino. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the episode you've been waiting for. Way- Welcome back to <laughs> Wigging Out with Scarpino. I have a question for everyone before we mm-hmm. get into this. Is a fake beard just a face wig? Andy. Yes. Tim? 100%. Kevin. But he only has yeah. it. Why would like he half t- of the time. Why would he be half <laughs> Yeah, I know. What is it? What it's real, reshoots. He yeah, he must have shaved the it. They had to have done reshoots. After it, making this film, it, Ewan McGregor <laughs> appeared in Black Hawk Down in 2001, which required him to be clean shaven and to have an extremely close buzz cut. New scenes with Obi-Wan Kenobi were then added to this film in post-production. Since McGregor had not had enough time to regrow his hair or a full beard, he had to be fitted with a hairpiece and prosthetic beard, which is often easily distinguished no from shit. his national hair. Natural hair, as it appears in the rest of the film. These scenes include the conversation between Obi Wan and Anakin in the elevator, the exchange concerning the Changeling in the Outlander Club, the Jedi Temple talk between Obi Wan, Mace, and Yoda, and his interrogation by Count Dooku. 
So almost every scene he's yeah. in so with the exception that's, of that's, Camino yeah. stuff. Oh god, what a bad, what a bad wig. Um, and this it sucks because this scene would have been su- is such a great moment that is just completely lost forever. Uh, let's see. Uh, instead, I, I wrote here instead of the anxiety incident being Anakin is called back from service to protect Padme, which would have been cool. He just shows up and is kind of nervous. This is this is an issue I have with this entire movie mm-hmm. is that Anakin should have been his main focus should have been getting back to free his mother and his people on Tatooine. And instead they, they were in a coma for 10 years. Super excited. They just woke up and now all he can think about is the things that happened in episode 1. Yeah. Oh, my mom and uh the Padme. Oh, so yeah, I love has, I love that line when he's like I'm not sleeping very much. Is it your mother? Yeah. B- b- like that hap- like that's been happening for a ten long time. Years. Yeah. And so I I I just it's sad because there's not a lot of conflict between these two characters. Anakin's not really that conflicted other than he just kind of is annoyed that he's being told what to do the entire time. Would have been a lot cooler if he was actually a Jedi and trying his whole purpose was to get back to Tatooine to like save his people and free them because he has the power now. And there's just obstacles that keep getting put in his way. Not the least of which is that Bunch he is a fucking tape. Jedi yeah. knight. <laughs> For all he or all he knows, he is he hasn't done the trials yet. But in his brain, he's like, I'm fucking ready, and they are gonna make me go guard this person on this other planet where I should be in the fucking action. That's the conflict. How cool is that? No. Oh, Padme? Oh, I've been in love with her for years. Where do you go from there? Also, like, kind of, like, like naive of the Jedi concept to be like, oh, yeah, he can watch. Like, they know that. They should know he's horny. Well, oh, he's I, horny. at that point, horny. Obi-Wan should have been like, oh. No, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, but all, all I'm saying hey, is, like, imagine uh, he says if- some weird shit on the elevator <laughs> yeah. about this. Maybe it's a bad <laughs> idea. One of the reasons why we like the Leia-Han relationship so much is because when it started off, they were antagonistic against each other, mm-hmm. which was just a thin facade for them actually being attracted to each other. We don't get any of this in this. Oh, we do. We get creepiness. We get Randomly, creepiness. We get, we get Natalie Portman sometimes being mean to him, sometimes being absolutely infatuated with him flippantly. Like I feel like there's no. I feel like it reason. start out uh, started out with like him being real creepy. Well, okay. he's, he's you mean when he said creepy? So yeah. they so they come in. Uh, thankfully, Jar Jar's there as well because they see needs something else to be to annoy me. And she goes, "Annie, my goodness, you've grown." And he says, "So have you. More beautiful, I mean, for a senator, I mean." And she goes, "Annie, you've all you'll always be that little boy I knew on Tatooine." Who talks like this? A this- and B. Why would you? Yeah. This whole conversation where it it starts here, and then it moves towards the the couch area where they're sitting down. There's this whole conversation. It 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 is like a high school play. I'm not exaggerating. Like every line, a high school play written by a high schooler. Every line, every line delivery, all of it is just so so poor quality, dude. It's it's fanfic. It's it's I'm in love with this person who has no idea I'm, I exist, and I'm gonna write fanfic about it. That's what this is. Yeah, Gia, when she was watching this, she's like, this reminds me of my college writing classes where every boy would just write these crazy stories about the babysitters they had when they were little kids that were 14. But now they're 25, and now they're super into me. It's creepy. And I find them at a bar. It's just like, God, you're so fucking right. It's just a bunch of horn. George Lucas is a hornball. Horn dog. He's a horn dog, but I'm also convinced he's never been in love. I don't think he <laughs> understands what love is or how humans interact with each other. I swear to God, and I'll, because I'm like, yeah. this is not how this is supposed to go. All but. of these scenes, uh, again, you know, I've, I've made the, the the comparison to like high school theater, but it this is the first of many lines of dialogue and many like back and forth between two or more characters, where it's like th- it's like watching the room, like with Tommy was so, where yes. everything is so like the I, I it's just beside me that this stuff like passed. Through the quality, and I was like, "Yeah, this shit's great." Like every every line said here is fantastic. Every line written I, is great. I just the acting wonder, is great. At any point, did like Natalie Portman, who's a great actor, she's so bad. Did she movie. read the script and be like, "Yeah, something's wrong, I here, guys"? And her agent pulled her aside and said. And then he showed her the number that they're it. paying her, and mm-hmm. she was like, "Motherfucker, all right, fine." She like, she, man, I, don't, I think she's shockingly bad in this movie. I mean, this is probably I mean, why it, she was so reluctant to do like Marvel stuff, and why she pushes so hard for there to be like actually good directors for this shit. Because I mean, you have to imagine she was burned real hard on this one, yeah. <laughs> real hard. Um, but Natalie, if you're watching this, you can no, do no, hard you can do no can. bad. You're fantastic. Oh, God. Uh, Anakin promises to find the person behind her assassination attempt, and Obi-Wan doesn't like that because his Padawan is being disobedient because that means he's turning evil. Uh, Anakin has thought about Padme every day since they parted, but she hasn't thought about him at all. Life sucks and isn't fair. Boom. Uh, Zam. But again, when he says that, like I feel like Obi-Wan should be like, hey, um, 
Don't say that out loud. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's like an inside. This thought. is literally this whole movie is the kind yeah. of shit where we all we've all had that one friend who were like obsessed about someone. In high school, it was me and my buddy <laughs> Stu pulled me aside and he was like, "Hey, you need to stop with this shit. Like, if you're thinking that stuff, stop. <laughs> and for sure, when you're thinking that stuff." Don't let it come out of your mouth because I don't think the way it sounds is the way you want it to sound. Big dick How you're being perceived is creepy pee pee. And that's just the message for everyone watching out there. If you're taking notes from this because you think it's going to get a girl for you, don't be creepy. Take pee-pee. the notes, burn them, and go, <laughs> and go watch a Brad Pitt movie. Okay? Uh, Zam and Django Fett meet up on a balcony, and Zam, uh, Django gives Zam some bugs. Um, I did the Zam or Zam, I can't remember. Uh, Amadala. But then I gotta love the exposition of like, be careful, they're very poisonous. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just such a cheap line. Really? But so also, much of this is so cheap, dude. What? That just seems such a dumb thing. Like, let's put bugs in her room and they'll know where to go and bite her. There's but also, very smart bugs. S- they're like evading our yeah. 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 she's, yeah. she's got a sniper rifle. <laughs> <laughs> the bugs are like hiding him behind also, the bed. And she, hey, let's use R2. R2. A fucking Metal Gear Solid like guard just like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I guess no one's here. Uh, so then we just cut over to Amadala's uh, apartment where she turned off the cameras because I guess she do- and he's a, I guess she doesn't like Anakin watching her. Another- what women wouldn't want that? A guy she hasn't seen in 10 years just watching her sleep. That's not creepy at all. But I, I, I do want to go back really quickly, though, to where Anakin is like, he, he just saw her for the first time in forever, and they have a little, like, kind of short conversation. She leaves or whatever. And meanwhile, like, Jar Jar is stoked to see Anakin, and Anakin's like, she doesn't even, she didn't even recognize me, Jar Jar. And, like, if I'm Jar Jar, I'm like, bro, like, what? I'm, I'm talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> we haven't seen each other in a decade it's like, either, bro. It's like, it's like, a, it's like a, I haven't seen Chewbacca in fucking 20 years. He just walks right past me, like, what's up, dog? Yeah, true. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe that's a future spoiler. We'll see. <laughs> uh, and then Anakin's, Obi-Wan's like, wait, you're using her as bait? And he goes, don't worry. I can sense everything that's happening in that room. Everything. Except for when the fucking <laughs> things get put in the room. I can't really sense that. <laughs> I can't really sense that. Well. Uh, and then also, he doesn't sleep well because he dreams about his mom. He'd much rather dream about Padme is something he actually said. Is. And this is one of those things, again, again? where if I were your friend, I'd be like, Stop. We gotta pull you away from this yeah, person. Man. You gotta go to the other side of the galaxy now, yeah. because this is a fucking HR violation waiting to happen. Waiting to happen. You're uh, powerful and stuff, but man, it's not worth it. It's <laughs> like, creepy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Too bad. He, oh yeah, there's some. There's a throwaway line in there about how he's like, you can't have, you can't do that. You're a Jedi or whatever like that. And we kind of established, I guess, that the Jedi's are like Catholic priests who only who can't have sex with anything. Why? I don't know. It's it's so fucking weird, and it's like this is one of those perfect examples because of it has to be bad writing to be where taboo it's like, love. They 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 put this out there just to have the plot of this movie. Like that's the. The whole plot of this movie is yeah. to get Anakin and Padme together. The conflict should have been something exterior from that. But instead, it's this weird throwaway thing where they're not allowed to love each other. And so that makes it hotter for some reason. I swear to God, Even like though- every time I pause the movie, because I was watching the, the Blu-ray that I have, um, uh, when I would pause it, like the chapter name would come up. I swear to God, every single chapter is named love. Forbidden Love. <laughs> like, why, like, why? Why? But it's but it's just so sad because like you look at you look back at the to, to bring it back to Leia and Han again. Like you look back at their conflict, and their conflict was she's the leader of the resistance, and he is an asshole rogue who just who only thinks about himself and is only out for profit. That's great, and yet they like each other despite that. That's good. That's a good character dynamic. Two characters that are fundamentally different. These two people are like, they're all, for all intents and purposes, they do the same thing all the time. They're all for the same thing. They all have. Ah, In the last movie, they explain that these force sensitive people it has to do with your blood. They can measure that in your blood. Yeah. And there's very few of them. Yeah. Why not let them reproduce? Yeah, let them reproduce. Why? <laughs> Why not let force it? Because you know what happens when force sensitive people have babies? Their kids are very force sensitive too. You'd think it would be like uh, genetic cloning, like in the beginning of Man of Steel, where they're just like, we make babies now and we figure out like exactly how. Anyway. Uh, Zem sneaks the bugs into Padme's room, and while, while the Jedi's argue over Palpatine's virtue, uh, they climb onto Padme's bed. One of the centipedes climbs through the sheets and makes his way up to Padme's exposed chest. She comes to frozen in fear, eyes locked. On the space bugs of venomous fames, it rears back to strike, and R2 zaps that little fucker like he did Salacious Crumb. <laughs> then, in the ensuing commotion, as Padme falls to the bed, the He's second the centipede the slithers around uh, around her, uh, cornering her, gaining speed, it corners her in the room, and strikes as its fangs narrowly, narrowly miss as Anakin's blue lightsaber cuts it in half. No, none of that like happens. Nagini. In <laughs> fact, <laughs> not only that, they set up the fact that R2's in the room. Yeah. Why is like why, why is he, he in the room? Like, why is he, <laughs> but why is he fuck? Why is, is he a, just looking? 
Why is it like a spotlight? Does he not have some sort of motion sensor? I think that's what was on the also, floor. No, that like was this. just the light coming hey, in from the the. Turn the lines. light off. I'm trying to sleep. Why? No, that was a, he had a spotlight. He had a spotlight. He had a spotlight. Yeah, no, but I thought the stuff no, the covering grid, the floor was like a... that grid thing was the lighting coming in through the blinds. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was, yeah. I always lighting. thought it. I, I always thought it was a. I always thought a it was ground, that like radar but, thing. If something but touches at that, it. like the 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 worm just fell the worm it. goes through it. So yeah. like, it's like that's why I there was are like, oh. no moments in this movie where we just stop and build tension. And that's my point with this, where it's like the things come in and then he goes they the outside they're literally mid sentence about Palpatine and he goes, I feel it too. And they run in, and he just goes, and the two little things get cut. The only part that's that it. there's tension. I did like I the way. I was okay he, with that. But. I like the way he ran in and immediately killed one and sliced the other, and then uh, Obi Wan dives out of the window to grab the dude, thing. My, I, I my like guy that. was reading the whisk at all, dude. Yeah. He just jumped out the window <laughs> that's on a rude. robot that, like, the robot can just it go can't. down and kamikaze. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, the, the problem with this, though, you brought this up a second ago, Nick. It's like the stakes are so low where you never feel tension or care. Or, or care for the characters. and that what they're doing because they can just jump off of anything yeah. and it's like willy nilly it seems like yeah. there's like, a lot of scenes where they jump off of stuff so many and it's like I hate that when he pillar does that. is 20 feet high and like you're landing on a like elephant you're playing frog textured monster adding an extra dimension yeah. you know what I mean yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. now you got the Z oh let me add, but, let me I, I will like go back to like you know Anakin doing the slashing uh-huh. that's one thing that I another thing I think is cool like it's not. It's I, not the I, I, that's my, I like the I way just, the just, movement of it, right? I, I just like to think that he is like super accurate with yeah, his yeah, lightsaber. Yeah. It's so cool. I'm totally uh, fine with that. But the whole point of the scene was that these two killer bugs are in there, and we see them for five seconds, and then they get a, they get slashed in half and a wide shot. Like there's no tension in this. Nobody. Like she should have at least killed one of them because she is an actual character who is a real person who is a fucking asleep. senator. She was asleep. Well, once she got woken up by something, you know what I mean? Like, R2's in there. We've set that up. No, it's just, hey, Tim, I feel it too. And then we don't even see him come in. We just see him jump on the bed as it's done. She's like, what the fuck's going on? Don't worry about nothing. Go back to bed. Okay. Like, no tension. Why would there be? And then he jumps out. And then he's just riding around. And then Zam pulls it. Zam sees it from fucking 500,000 feet away and goes, oh, shit, a Jedi's coming at me. Because I knew there was Jedi's there. How? I don't know. Let me kamikaze this, this yeah, drone Yeah, why would it come back? Why would it? <laughs> so you think she's like, oh, fuck, I really need that drone. That's my one murder drone. Yeah. She's and like, I, you can't get those anymore. Those are vintage it's drones. A, it's like a but taxi driver like, like needing their Why taxi. did we need Zan? What? Why Django? did Django, Django hire Zam? I have no idea. Well, Django couldn't just put this droid out there? Like, why didn't Zam go from, like, a window and just snipe this, you know? I don't know. Uh, that's a great question. I have no idea. Well, because they have to... It, it somebody was, has to die to give to the mystery pad, going. It's to pad the story and add more stuff. How but long was would, this chasing, guys? It was so long. And How many it, cool things happened? Now, to be fair, it does give us a really cool I, a view that I really like of Cor- Coruscant. That, like... Where it's like, man, well, that only, city looks fucking dope. It's only because they made it look like Blade Runner. Yeah. Like, that's the only reason. Really, a too. really, really clean yeah. fifth element, a really, really clean Blade What the hell was that? I think Joey just sneezed. Uh, anyway, all right, Zam shoots the thing off. He starts falling. But we know for sure he's not going to die because guess what? Right before that, we saw Anakin slowly walk over to his little speeder. So we're like, okay, Anakin's going to save him. And then he does save him. And he's not even surprised that he gets saved. He's just like, yeah, okay, cool. And then they go, they go after Zam. And then Anakin's like, they, they go, she goes through a tunnel. And they're like, he's like, I'm going to take a shortcut, which is not a shortcut because it has to go all the way around the building. doesn't matter. There's a reason why there's a tunnel in the building, but he figured it out. And then he's looking around. He goes, you've lost him. And he goes, I'm sorry, master. I'll never do it again. I'm going to kill myself now. And then jumps out right onto Zam's thing. And Obi-Wan's like, I hate it when he does that. Because I guess he does that a lot because he's, br- he's a brash Jedi, a young brash Jedi. That's what happens. And, like the, and they're also- trying to build like cool character moments. They're trying to build... Cool back and forth. Try is a good word. Yeah, and, and it just it usually falls flat. Anakin tries to use his lightsaber to cut the cockpit open or something. I don't know, but he fucking loses the lightsaber again, and then Obi Wan catches it, and he's it like, he keeps losing his lightsaber. The guy on, the, on the roller coaster who catches the phone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what it reminded me. Of. But it's but it's what that. See, the thing about this is, and they have another throwaway line later where his, his lightsaber gets crushed, and he goes, "Oh, not again! Obi Wan's gonna yeah. kill me." The lightsaber used to be this like sacred Special. thing. <laughs> it's like. To pull it back into martial arts terms, your belt, you know, like your belt is sacred. 
you don't just randomly buy another belt even though we do all the time in jiu-jitsu because we don't care. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? It's a sacred thing that you built. And if you lose it, you're supposed to be, it's supposed to mean something, right? Nick's belt is sacred to him. <laughs> <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? Like Luke had to build this lightsaber. He constructed it. Oh, like Vader looks at it and goes, you've constructed a new lightsaber. This is part of your training. This is a big moment in your life. That's great. In this one, you just go to the liquor store, you buy a new lightsaber. Because at the end, they just toss him one. Everyone's got lightsabers to spare. Yeah. Oh, did you? I have my old lightsaber. Did you want this? It's like my old iPhone. There's iPhones in this fucking world. It's like Link's Master Sword. Like, it's an important thing, you know? Like, I'm really happy that in uh, episode six, he was like, man, I broke a bunch of these, you know? <laughs> God. Anyway, Jam sits, uh, Zam's ship catches fire and crashes. Anakin tumbles off before it hits the ground. A foot chase ensues. Anakin chases Zam into Tech Noir or whatever the fuck the club was. <laughs> and man, this place is packed. And it's thumping, and it's dark, and it's gritty, and dirt. No, it's just like there's like five people in there having a cup of coffee. It reminds me it's of. It's so quiet in this place. This and there's not even that big of a crowd. This is such a specific thing, but when Metreon first opened, like, do you remember how the goal of Metreon was supposed to be like, it's the, the mall of the future? Yeah. Dude, and the PlayStation Store was fucking the PlayStation awesome. Store was fucking dope. Remember the robot? Let's talk for a second but about they, the robot. That's the thing is, they had this whole section that looked exactly like this mall where it's like you could do this giant like space bowling, but instead they had pod racing. They also had a lot of random cameos. Uh, when Obi Wan and Anakin enter the sports bar on Coruscant to search for the assassin Zam, uh, several actors and crew members from the Star Wars movies can be spotted, including Ahmed Best the voice of Jar Jar Binks, and Anthony Daniels, who's C-3PO. Uh, also visible in the crowd are R2-D2 handler Don Bees and his droid team. Uh, as they walk in, uh, Anakin gets a lecture from Obi-Wan about losing a saber. We get it. You're teaching him. I get it, Obi-Wan. <laughs> what a great teachable moment. Don't lose your saber. No shit. Uh, also, uh, he says that Zam's a changeling because he saw her face move a little bit. So FYI, she's a changeling. So don't just make sure you look for everyone. Like another another just, moment where tension would have been great because we, we didn't know that. If the audience knew that and the characters didn't, that's where tension comes from. Do you understand that? The attention comes from the fact that we know something. We can't stop. We can't help the people on screen. But if they know it too, then it doesn't matter. When I first watched this movie, I distinctly remember seeing that happen when her face kind of like distorts. Yeah, and you're like, that's weird. And thinking like, did I just make that up? Like I was confused as I was, I was like – like Ten seconds later, I'm like, no, that didn't happen. Nope. Like that oh. must have been my eyes. That must like what the fuck just happened. But the thing is, this like this is this was another great moment for them to be like, these guys are fucking Jedi. They don't. It doesn't. You the way you should have set this scene up is that this is a changeling, a very dangerous changeling that could be could look like any single thing, and the only person that could really figure out who's who is someone that has a sixth sense, a fucking Jedi that understands that that looks like Kevin, but it doesn't feel like Kevin. And I used the fucking, I cut his fucking hand off, right? No. He just kind of like waits for someone to come up behind him and then realizes it's her and then cuts her arm off. Oh, he cut her arm off because that's if, what happened in the first one. I would have just been from super far away. Right? Like, <laughs> do everything further away. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, at what point do they see her face? You know? At what point are they like, I know her face. That's the face that I'm looking for. No. They saw someone jump out of a car. Right? No, Anakin's I, looking at I think her. Anakin kind of saw her, but Obi-Wan yeah. did. It when, when he's like dangling back and forth on the <laughs> ship. I don't know, man. Let's keep, we'll keep going. Obi-Wan yeah. examines. Okay, so uh, they drag her outside and uh, start interrogating her. Uh, but before she can reveal who sent her, Jenga Fett puts one in her heart and then slowly flies away as if to tell the audience, uh, this could have been a chance to chase me, but we've already had enough of that. <laughs> we don't want any more of that. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. George Lucas. Thank you. We just, they, he just, and they're like, I'm done. I don't want to. He's gone. Want, like, yeah. you have to imagine it was like, do you want to change that? Because I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just go. It's Let's late, go. bro. And you're like, tired. Is that Boba Fett? We're watching this movie for the first time, and did we just see Boba Fett fly away? That doesn't make sense with the timeline. No. That's, that's crazy. Let's see how they explain this. Obi-Wan examines the toxic dart that killed so her and tells cool. the audience it's a toxic dart. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> Glad you have all those Jedi trainers to tell us something that of the fucking bus boy in the club could have figured out. This is why I never went to college. But uh, I, 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 again, I, I want to go back to like I really enjoy just kind of this part of the mystery, like and really only this part. But I, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, it's it's a thing I love in movies where they're trying to get someone to talk and the guy bites on the poisonous thing that like kills him or whatever. Yeah, and it's like God, we almost had the answer. And I I love that kind of. They're they're bringing like old school gangster films oh, into this. It's a detective it's, noir it's cool. movie. Yeah. Wouldn't it have been cool if, as they're interviewing, like um, was it Zam? <laughs> Zam. Yeah, you know, just like, yeah, like what's going on? Well, uh, what, makes you, what makes you qualified to work here? Anakin just pulls out his lightsaber and. <laughs> 
kills this little thing before it hits him because they're like they have prescience like they can see things that are they can feel things that are going to happen like why did they stop it because they not feel like, the, the plot start. must continue and I, I love really quick I love that she gives in after Anakin raises his voice just a little bit yeah tell us now <laughs> oh, but the, okay. But, uh, okay but you when she dies when she this. dies she calls him a slimo yeah Fuck. me does it slimo the Jedi Council order uh, Anakin to take Padme back to Naboo for a protective custody. Wait, I'm sorry. Let me just interrupt for a second. Do you think that, uh, what was the death stick slinger? Like, do you think he changed his life? Like, do you think he left and, like, Maybe. went back to yeah. school? Yeah. Because oh, yeah. yeah. you, you, you know what he did? He went on to Fast <laughs> and Furious 1 and became an engineer for Dom and oh, the yeah, Game. Yeah, yeah. He is totally Jesse. fucking Jesse, dude. Yeah. I, I swear there is a comic that follows. It's like a one off comic that follows what happened to him after that exchange. I love it. But also, like, this is a fucked up thing to do to someone. Like, that's an abuse of power. Anyway, uh, later that day, the Jedi Council orders Anakin to take Padme back to Naboo for protective custody. And either they don't have the ability to sense severe horniness, or they just want Anakin to breed Padme, because even my fucking dead grandma could tell that these two are going to fuck. Yeah. Like, why would you put them in this spot together? And it's weird, too, because, like, again, talking about the flippantness of Natalie Portman's character, if you even want to call it that, with how mm. she feels towards Anakin, now she's just totally into it. Like, yeah. even I got the vibe where I'm like, you want to bang this child. It's very weird. Like, you want to do this, and you're... you're Deciding to bring him to your private gardens so, to wait, guarantee that y'all get your fuck on. The, also, we there's uh, someone trying to hunt this girl down. Where should we bring her? That's not here. Her home planet. Her home. Yeah. Let's let's bring her there. The remote. Why? The remote home planet. Well, because it's a remote place on this beautiful idyllic planet, and they don't have starships that can take them from place to place very very easily. They don't have that. Oh wait, they do. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's super easy to get around everywhere. So yeah, let's hide in plain sight on a fucking lake. Why not? Why not do that? Uh, God forbid. God forbid we put them in some place that both of the characters don't know. So that when they go there, the only thing they do know is, is each, each other. other. Wow. Why would love. you not do that? Oh, we're both uncomfortable. What do we have? Each other. We're pushed together. We're in this fucking horrible place that we've never been to. Them. Yeah, but what fucking Dude, animal is he going to surf, surf on? Skateboard that on. That ass. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, shit, dude. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. I'll fucking say it. Why With is her he fucking so hot headbands. She's wearing though. so many headbands. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's keep going because this movie is fucking long. Uh, Not only she wear headbands. How many different styles of like almost Princess Leia is she gonna do? Where it's like we don't need these type of callbacks. Like, how does Leia fucking? She had that know? crazy perm too. Her hair was like insanely yeah, like point, frizzy yeah. in one shot in one uh yeah scene yeah it was good for her interesting uh, let's see Anakin asks Palpatine to talk to Amidala so they can take her to Naboo and Palpatine starts grooming him and and, and his uh, scene is ultimately pointless uh, so is the scene where Obi Wan and Mace Windu and Yoda tell uh, everyone Anakin is arrogant then Yoda uh, then Yoda just kind of flips the script on Obi Wan he's like well you're arrogant too and he's like what. You don't even want me to train this fucking kid. And now all of a sudden, Yoda is weirdly on Anakin's side the entire time during this movie. Even though the last movie, he spent the better part of 14 scenes saying, this kid is dangerous. <laughs> we can't let him train. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Well, now you're, now you're homies with him? Why? Because he's going to, I don't know, save someone? Who the fuck knows? Uh, and it makes reminds everyone of the prophecy. It also sucks that, like, you know, in episode one, I wish we, I wish I had watched the first version of it because with puppet Yoda... Because no, it's terrible. Yeah, but we just saw a regression of CG and Yoda because they remade him for Episode One, but in Episode Two they didn't remake him, so we saw like better CG in Episode One. A general one fall in quality where everybody else looks. I don't think it was garbage. that big of a fall. I, I mean, you saw it on. I thought you saw it on your phone, didn't you? I, no, I saw I saw it on like three different devices: <laughs> phone, my, iPad, like and TV. A, anything, and Palm Pilot. Anything soft tissue in this in this movie that is like j CG, a, like a Jar Jar and all the, the aliens. Diner it guy. just looks the bugs, so terrible. The diner, oh my god! And, and diner, even their clothing and stuff, dude, like not even just the not skin. It's like anything. The clone troopers, the fucking clone troopers. Why are they CG? I don't know. All of them. Uh, what about that? that According to animation director Rob Coleman, not a single clone trooper suit was ever built. Every clone trooper seen in the movie is computer generated. It's my like, least favorite. You can barely tell like, by uh, their eye lines of not knowing where exactly to look. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, important here then at the end of the scene for no reason, Mace Windu reminds everyone of the prophecy. Just so you know, there's a prophecy. Where did it come from? We don't know. We don't care. It's a also, we all like fought against it. We didn't try to make it happen. It seemed like we didn't believe about it then. I guess we're all in now. 
Uh, Amidala and says, and it doesn't like it doesn't matter. I don't want to get into the the balancing of the force. Amidala says goodbye to Jar Jar Binks, and thankfully, so do predominantly the rest of this movie, which is great. He's not really in the rest of it except for one scene later. Great. Uh, Padme is pissed because she's worked really for a really hard for a really long time to defeat the Military Creation Act, and now she wants to stay here and see it through for when they vote. Okay, that, that's a thing that we just introduced in this movie. Great. Uh, and, uh, Jar Jar Binks is left in her place yeah, as the, as her like, proxy. Yeah. Makes sense. And he votes for it. Not only does he vote for it, he is the one that like starts the vote of it. Yeah. Uh, Anna compla- <laughs> complains like a small child about You know Obi- what I mean? That's the opposite of what she wanted, Tim. <laughs> <Yeah. him. laughs> uh, Anakin complains like a small child about Obi-Wan, and boy, is it sexy. I mean, why wouldn't you want a piece of that ass, right? She's 24? He doesn't point? trust me. He doesn't do it. And she's just sitting there like, uh, like I'm ready for up. the trial. And she's like, I haven't talked to you in 10 years. I don't know what you're talking about, What are you, about, ta- what are you <laughs> saying? Yeah. None you're, of this makes any sense. Yeah, I don't know like, Jedi shit. I don't feel safe around you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you already said two really questionable things to me. And, and now you're doing... And you also... We get, both at, know you're watching me while I sleep. And then you give me the fuck me eyes at the end of this conversation. And like, I... Immediately, I would go to fucking Jimmy Smith and be like, I don't feel safe around this guy, dude. <laughs> Jimmy, yeah. Yeah. Get, like, like, is this the scene where she goes, don't look at me yes, like that? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. It makes me uncomfortable. But and he's like, 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 yes, my lady. Uh, <laughs> you know what's really, the, you know what the saddest point, part stop. about this whole thing is? <laughs> is that there should have been, and, and I dare I say, if you were going to write these characters like this, there should have been another love triangle. And it should have been Obi-Wan's character. 100%. That she, 100%. That she was into, and Anakin couldn't deal with that. And but but through circumstances like it should have been her and Obi Wan having a thing mm-hmm. in the first one. In this one, it switches over to Anakin having a thing as a mistake, and then it goes back to her and Obi Wan, and Dude, then she dies because of that. It makes so much more sense for her to be into Obi Wan one because he's Ewan McGregor, two yeah. because like he's a dope fucking older guy that's like not that much older than but her. But he's like ambitious mm-hmm. and on the cusp of becoming a Jedi Knight, and like when they met, he saved her ass a bunch of times, and she's cool, and she's like a senator. He's and got she's a cool hot, apartment, she's got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. yeah, he's got a cool, not a great one, but like yeah. cooler it's than cool, the ones yeah. that we all live in right yeah. now. Yeah, but no. No, they're just everyone's. That's just he's got a cool. He's got a cool like a God. Nescafe maker. Can you imagine that? <laughs> yeah, and, before and it was like before they were Darth cheap. Maul trying to figure out where he's been hiding. It's like when you go over to Fran's house and you're like, "Why do you have a full barista set up with a big machine to make <laughs> espresso? Why do you have that?" <laughs> 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 he doesn't have I want to believe that he does. I want to believe that he does. Yeah, yeah, I feel like all of us had a moment of life. You just does made that up. Yeah. <laughs> You've never been to Fran's house. Yeah. Fran would not let me over to his house. Are you kidding me? You know how many pictures I take if I went to Fran's house? Oh, all of my them. God. Now, are you Last saying time you Fran would take let me photos? into a room, Alfredo got naked in his bed. <laughs> <laughs> and we took photos of it. Oh, oh my and God. We, yeah. I don't think we're supposed uh, to talk about no, that. Definitely yeah. not. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Just wore his clothes God, and those shit. photos are awful. <laughs> They're hilarious. Uh, Amidala and Anakin, I think, I think the statute of limitations is up on that. Amidala and Anakin head off on assignment together and they giggle because R2 is there too. Uh, Obi-Wan <laughs> goes to a 50s diner to see Dex. And maybe this is an homage to American Graffiti, but man, it's sure out of place here. Because Dex, and then Dex tells him that the weapon that killed Zem is uh, a Camino saber dart from them cloners. And he goes, oh, okay, that's cool. Never heard of Camino before. And he goes, oh, you haven't? It's about 12 parsecs south of this fucking shitty movie, is what it is. <laughs> it says 12 parsecs. Oh, okay. This this is oh. honestly one of the scenes that you were talking about the, the Bad CG. Uh, scene where, no, like, oh. like wherever it's yeah. like, fuck, what is going on? I feel like all the dialogue, all the shit, like it's so fucking bad. But this was the moment for me in this movie th- with this rewatch where I was just like, oh my God, this really is the worst Star Wars movie. Yeah. Like, th- why? Why does it? A, why is it a 50s diner? Why is Obi-Wan going to talk to this guy? Who is this guy? Why does this guy that knows this information now work at a fucking diner? Like, I love that the so woman, the, the woman robot's also like from Brooklyn. <laughs> hey, hey Dex, honey, you got a customer. <laughs> yeah. But it's weird where it's like, the we were talking about the Obi-Wan stuff being cool. It's only cool when you say there's a mystery that he's trying to figure out. When you actually look at what he's doing, like step to step, it's like, okay, now he's at, he just found this thing, poison dart. Now he's at a diner. The guy tells him, oh, yeah. the poison dart comes from this place. Then you go to this place. It's like, well, I think paint so, by numbers. So here's the thing. Like, a lot of this movie is very so obviously made for kids. Because a lot of the, he's beating you over the head with with exposition and and like things that the audience basically needs to know in order to follow him along on this. Yeah, I because disagree, if man. you were writing this scene 
for like let's put it this let's let's take another example that I thought of when I when I when I looked at this another detective uh, sci-fi noir movie Blade Runner twenty forty nine. There's a great moment in that where he's trying to figure out what the hell's going on, and he just sits in front of a machine, and the machine's so cool, and it's like like Rolodex. He's trying to find the DNA strand for like uh, for something I can't remember the exact the exact examples of it, but. That's complex, and it requires the audience, obviously, to like pay attention to what's going on, and tr- and and it doesn't treat the audience like children, because it requires you to read and figure out what the machine's doing and all that stuff. Why wouldn't he take the dart to like I don't know R two D two or another fucking thing that's a machine that could help him figure out what this is going on? Instead, we code. get introduced this new character that we're never going to see again, and then he goes to the I'll Jedi Archive. Like, 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 why wouldn't the Jedi Archive Dude. have this? I just like the voice actor. I, I thought he was like a cool voice actor that. If I met him in a game and he was an NPC, I'd be like, oh, I like talking to this guy. Yeah, like I would like, I like hang the out cut with of his jib. Yeah. yeah. But Nick, the the thing that I disagree with is I feel like the writing is not for kids, where it's like so ridiculously complex. It's convoluted, is really what it is. Yeah. But the next step when they get to the clone stop and they start explaining the backstory of all that, there's no kid that can understand what the fuck is going on. There. Oh, I know. I mean, and that's 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 Cypho one of the travesties Diaz. is that he had these insanely complex ideas that he's doing but he's trying to give them to you in, in the most simplest dumbest way and that's where that's where this movie just, just fundamentally fucking fails um but okay so that's dex tells him it's a it's a camino saber dart from them cloners never heard of them it's 12 uh, obi-wan goes to the jedi and th- next we see uh, obi-wan going to the jedi archive which is just where this scene should have started anyway because you feel like maybe they have all the information for the entire galaxy because they're the peacekeepers. There's he should have found it there. Ten thousand of them. There's but when he so when he went planets. like but when he goes to look for Camino, it's not there. And then he asks the woman who's uh, in her samurai cosplay to where's Camino? I don't see it on here. And she goes, Well, if it's not there, it's just it doesn't exist. But then like he's like, but he's like, all but the gravity is still everything's affected. there. And she's like, Oh, okay, don't. Ha- I don't know why every librarian in every movie is an asshole. Yeah. To the person like, isn't your whole fucking job to help the people that are there? <laughs> I've always like, had great experiences fucking... with librarians. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, well, Obi-Wan goes. Cool. Yeah. Uh, let's Very see. helpful. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, uh, and then she goes, well, look, if it's not there, uh, maybe someone deleted it from the archive. And he goes, oh, okay. Yeah, that probably makes sense. Because I'm not seeing it here, but like, yeah. it's all roads point to the fact that it was here before, so maybe it was deleted from the archive. But you know who I should check with, just in case? The guy who's the has nothing better to do than take my shit. And he's also, by the way, teaching the preschool class. Which, by the way, in jiu-jitsu, you have like the fucking purple belts teach, or the blue belts teach the preschool class. But you know what? No, let's get grand fucking master Elio Gracie to come in. The guy that founded Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to teach the fucking kids. Why not? I well, like well no, nah, I, I don't mind that. To me, it's like, you know, a fucking five-year-old jujitsu kid isn't going to, like... I, to be fair, I think uh, Elio Gracie probably talked about I think with, like, the uh, Jedi, with Jedi, it's like, you know, we need to see if we find something special amongst these, yeah. like, children. So you think you know? he's so, walking around being like, no, nah, his medical area count too low. Yeah. yeah. But I also, this kid's only better. 400. But I also yeah. like the idea of, like, Yoda likes to spend his time of, like, spending time in, like... He's like Mr. Rogers. These, yeah, exactly. And he probably, out of all of the other Jedi and the Jedi Council, can talk to kids the easiest because he is, you he's know, on their like, level. Yeah. Literally. Oh, a, lot of, level. a lot of he's the, uh, you know? they're like I mean, random ass callbacks smart. and references and like just direct having something that was in the old movies back in these movies, I don't really like. I thought that the them having the, the, the helmet, helmet on and, helmet thing, and yeah. Yeah. doing the, the weird probe droid thing, yeah. it's cool. Because yeah. it's like that. But only it looks stupid when you look at the kids because they're just waving their things. There's not anything, you know what I mean? Like, I, 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 mean, I thought dumb, it looked fine. I also hated the CG <laughs> kids. Oh, oh, the aliens! There's like really. Three oh, eyes. there's one. There's one that had the like the, the was red, like red and white. Yeah, I thought he looked. It's cool. look, uh, like just it. It was oh, bad. So it looks bad. So Obi Wan yeah. goes to Yoda to help find. Uh, to look help good on my phone <laughs> for help. <laughs> it's fair for help finding Camino and, and Yoda embarrasses his ass in front of all the children. <laughs> Obi Wan, hey, hey really? kid, uh, bring down the shades. You a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> bring him up. Bring him back up. <laughs> Obi Wan sees the gravity left over from Camino system, but there's no planet in the archive. And then Yoda asks all the kids, why could this be? And one of the kids says, maybe someone deleted it from the archive. And then Obi Wan rolls his fucking eyes because he just figured that out in the archive 15 minutes earlier. Why? Why have both scenes? Have either of these scenes? Just honestly. It's not there. <laughs> That's weird. Why don't I take my fucking ship? And go over there and take a look at it, because I'm going to do that anyway. But also, when you're deleting something like a planet, delete maybe the delete pool. the whole star system. Yeah. Just have nothing. A space, you know? Yeah, but I, I do think that getting the answer from her is a lot di- different than the answer from Yoda. Yes, like, but 
But here's the here's the issue I have with this is that Obi Wan's character is on. Uh, he's trying to figure shit out. He's the main character. He doesn't need. He shouldn't need validation from two separate sources to tell him to go to the next step of the mystery, right? He sees it. He should go with his gut feeling of, I'm going to go check this out. Not only should he do that, but if you're writing this in a detective story, and he doesn't want to bog other people down with it. So he'd go under like, I'm not going to tell anyone I'm going. Especially because I got a bad feeling Because I'm not supposed to be on this, this mission. I got a bad feeling. I got to go over there on myself. Like, you got to separate him. Instead, he checks with everyone and goes, hey, make sure you know I'm going to Camino. Hey, make sure you know I'm going to Camino. Hey, Camino, that's where I'll be. So just in case I don't come back. Make sure you send everyone. And by the way, that's going to come back later when he sends the message and everyone gets it. Oh, cool. Make sure we know. Make sure the audience knows that all the Jedi are coming to save you. Therefore, zero conflict, zero tension at the end of this movie. Anyway, he goes, cool. Okay, well, now that I validated it through every single character in this fucking story, I'm going to (laughs) Camino. How about that? Uh, Yoda tells him to go check it out for himself. Uh, Let's see. This whole scene could have been convinced. Um... I put this in here, but I don't know. we'll keep going. Uh, well, let me let me read this and see if it's worth it. Uh, Yoda tells everyone to go check it out for himself, uh, and th- oh, that's what I was gonna say. This could have all literally been condensed into a scene between Obi Wan and R two, like when Luke decided to go to Dagobah system instead of meeting with the fleet. In the original trilogy, R two served as a, that great device just to be able to have the main, like to hear the main character's inner like conflict talk to somebody and have him talk to someone that wasn't another character. So I'm not going there. I'm going to Dagobah. Yes, I'm going to complete my training. But no, I'm going to Camino because I got a gut feeling that something's there, but no one believes me. And Yoda just told me not to go because Yoda wants me to go to Naboo and help out Anakin, which is where I should be anyway. Because otherwise, Anakin's going to be every time you open a door, he's going to be jacking off in a fucking closet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He should have been on Na- Naboo and he should have gotten so this. aggressive. He should have been. They both should have been ordered to go there and they both should have needed to had gut feelings or reasons to get them off there. But instead, it doesn't matter. Um. Anyway, Yoda tells him to go uh, someplace where I already know and figure out something for yourself. Only, uh, only, a, and then he goes. Only, a, also, only a Jedi could have erased those files. Why? Why? It's not a. It's a question I would ask. Why? Because it's the Jedi archive, and only the Jedi's are allowed in there. Is that why? Yeah, I think okay. so. Cool. Must have been Deku, right? Because he's the only other Jedi that we talked about that we introduced in this, right? Was it him? We don't know. Why didn't he? And ask we're never like, gonna know. Why didn't he ask the librarian to be like, "Hey, can you look up that file? Like, who deleted? Who deleted it? it? You know, like, nah, I'm busy. Would have been a great way. <laughs> yeah. Another great way. I'm to I'm actually like, off. Like, I was supposed to be off 30 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, if Pad- it was deleted, it was deleted on purpose. I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Padme and uh, and Anakin, or maybe the uh, God forbid, the fucking uh, the woman be the person that deleted it. Why? Well, she's another thread to this mystery. Maybe she was Deku's fucking lover or some shit. It like was that. probably Cypher Diaz. Who's Cypher? I don't know. I don't Who the know. Fuck is that? Some Jedi that died. We introduced three people in this. Two of whom are the same person, and one of whom we never see again. We don't ever see this guy. Did we ever meet Typho Diaz? No. Yeah. Did we know who the fuck he was? And there's yeah. a, there, I, think I googled him. There's like in Clone Wars. In, yeah. in uh, was the B- Bounty Hunter, the Star Wars game? So good. He's in it. I I think I think he might be in it. No, it's a, I finally saw it spelled no? out though because I watched it with subtitles. S I F O dash Diaz D Y A S. Yeah, I have yeah, sold it wrong here. Uh, Padme and Anakin arrive on Naboo stuff. and have a random conversation about Pan- Padme serving her two terms as queen and then staying on a senator, mostly just so we know why she's still in the position of power, even though he, she could have just been queen. Yeah, could have just been queen. Didn't need to really have. But then why would there. she be on Coruscant? You know. They had to give her a reason to be on and hang out in chorus, huh? The next scene is I'm more just exposition. Out with my bros, man. You know, we just uh, that's a, all the time. And then we get more exposition where she meets <laughs> with the queen the and the, the governor, the same governor as before, and they just say, "Hey, just so you know, Newt Gunray's still in power." And then the governor asks Anakin, "How? <laughs> Why? I don't, know. I don't get it, dude." <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> then the governor crazy. asks. <laughs> they were literally arrested. <laughs> I didn't even think about yeah. that. Yeah. Gov- well, they have some lie where he's like, well, politics. Hey! Uh, then the, the governor says, hey, Anakin, what's your plan to protect Padme? And then he goes, well, I got it. And then Padme just puts his ass in his place. She wants to go up to the super romantic lake house because she feels like that, that's going to be the best place to protect her. Not the palace yeah. with all the guards. Mm-hmm. No, let's go to this place so we can fuck. Yeah. Like, she one track mind. And what's even better about them. this is that. That's how I and, lost and my again, virginity. Again, another moment. Out, yeah. Another <laughs> moment where there is conflict. Oh, you don't want me to do the thing that I want to do. This is a character 
conflict, right? The scene started one way, it should end another way. They go up to the scene. So as an audience member, I'm thinking, oh, some shit's going to go down at this lake house, right? He might be right. They're going to get attacked here. They just have yeah. dinner. They stopped floats. attacking them. And she eats like at, a CGI Oh, that's a good point, apple. right? Away. <laughs> at no point does anyone try to kill her again. No, in this yeah, movie. they were just done. Until, he will, uh, they, until they put her in danger, yeah. which is ridiculous. Uh, Obi Wan, <laughs> let's see. Uh, <laughs> when, she, when she eats the apple. <laughs> Obi Wan takes so uh, bad looking. It's so bad looking. <laughs> uh, Obi Wan takes that cool ship to uh, to Kamino and then undocks oh, it. It's so which cool. I like that concept. Jedi Starfighter. So cool. yeah. And what I like about that concept is that they never explain why he had to do that. Other than we, we kind it. of get a little bit of a line that it's far away when later when they're like that's really far away from us. But it's one of those wonderful things where it's like we get it. Yeah. He it was he had to take a thing to the thing. We don't need to explain every fucking thing in this movie. But also like even in Empire where they're like you know there's no way a, a fighter would be out in deep out space this like this. Yeah, yeah. like cool. I love that concept. It's so cool. Except the uh, X wings actually had hyperdrives. Uh, once there, let's see. Oh, we want to take a small ship. Didn't. Uh, find time. That was easy. No obstacles in the way. No bad guys. I got to rough up to figure that one out. Uh, anyway, he just goes and just lands at Camino, and the Caminos greet him, and one of them takes him to see the Camino Prime Minister. Uh, and man, are these people just very forthcoming with all the information to this person that just landed that they've never met before? I feel like Kojima wrote this whole yep. bit. Uh, they're also too fucking tall. They're really tall, and I hate tall people because, yeah. as we've established, only tall people get love in these movies. <laughs> but I, but I, I, does Yoda have a girlfriend? Fucking Yaddle. does Yoda get? Does he is he slamming up against the fucking floating apples later? No, but Hayden Christensen is because he's a solid six one. I will say that um, is he slamming I, against some I apples know, later? I know we hate this. Is he riding the fucking beast? The beast named that ass. That <laughs> is gonna right, go with a Shakespeare reference. I know we hate this this sort of badly written mystery. Like I I don't think it's well executed at all. But there is a cool sort of like I do get a cool vibe from it of like. Oh yeah, well, si- yeah. Aren't you Sifo Dias? Like, no. And it's like, well, he died like ten years ago. I love all that sort yeah, of. Back it's and forth. so fucking cool. It's cool. I, yeah, I, en- but- I enjoy that too. The- Sorry, God. And I like. I know it's dumb, but I like the that like they were like, oh, we were expecting you. Great, come in. Let me explain everything to you yeah. because we don't have an understanding that that like there's some secret shit happening. We just know that Jedi's. Ordered this shit, and your order's about ready. I think, like, as the yeah. viewer, we are Obi Wan in the situation. Yeah. We are and walking in, like, confused as he is. What is going yeah, on? But, but here's a moment. Is? Here's a moment where oh, Obi Wan handles it super well, just being like, "Yeah, no, of course." Yeah, but no, no, but that, but see, I disagree with you guys on this. He goes along with it, almost like I'm going to trick these people, but they don't need to be tricked. At one point, he goes, "Yes, I do know exactly what you're talking about." And they're like, "Okay, cool." Yeah. But they're like, we don't care if you do or not because we're just going to tell you all this information. This is, in my opinion, a terrible scene because he, the second he landed on that, the audience should have been like, he's in danger, right? And they should have been luring him in. They sh- there should have been. They're making this army. This sh- it should have been a secret army. They should have been like, who the fuck are you? And he should have had to use his Jedi cunning to trick them into at least letting him in and discovering more of this. But instead, they're just like, you want to stay a while? And you believe fully that he's in no danger whatsoever until he meets Jango Fett, which is, like, another bad scene. But, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, when you land on this mysterious planet and we're in the mystery, you shouldn't immediately diffuse all the tension with these super happy-go-nice people. They should have been like, who are you? And he should have had to been like, yeah, Cypher Diaz. I'm Cypher Diaz. Or whatever mystery um, thing he unlocks from the fucking Jedi Council, he should have used that in Cypher Diaz. I see that. What the hell is that? I'm going to pretend to be him. Also, why wouldn't they know he's not him? It's only been 10 years, not 300 years. These people, what, do they only live one minute? Yeah. I, that, it how do they not know no, I have a picture of Cypher Diaz? I think the him. only just cool element online order. is this the first time I've ever seen Amazon Prime 300, order. 300,000? Yeah, that's what, three. 200,000. It's, it's 200, the first time right? that I'm questioning what is happening. Like, they introduce something, I'm like, oh, I want to know more about this. Yeah. Why don't they know who he is? Why, I, I'll agree with you, Why Nick. is it, it, it all this stuff? But then... It's not executed well. But then they, we get yeah. no payoff. We get no answers to those questions. I thought it was cool. And instead, it's just like... And I totally disagree with you, Kev, about uh, Obi-Wan. He seems stupid as fuck. He seems like he's just kind of there like, oh, shit, yeah, I guess I'm going along with this. But it doesn't seem smart. It just I, seems like he's... Falling and fumbling through it, the, the like tall, Jar Jar Binks. Tall, long neck, <laughs> tall, long neck aliens. Like I, the comedians, caminos, caminos. Their, their, um, I think their sort of demeanor kind of made me feel unsettled because, like, I, I it I, made I me feel so unsettled chill. because I thought at some point they were going to try to kill him, but knowing that they're not going to try to kill him, you, you know, about like halfway when you're like, I don't think they're going to try to kill him. Huh? 
I think it's well, fine. I just yeah, do like cool. that there's something sinister afoot. You know, like there, there, there's shit going on. I wish they the leaned into it. Yeah, more. sure, sure, sure. I course. wish that they would have opened a door. Like, I wish this movie would have done what, a lot of what, things. What <laughs> I, what I wanted from this scene was the scene where uh, Lando goes, "Hey, I want you guys to join me for lunch." And the second he says that, you're, as the audience member, you're like, we've already heard Leia say something's not right here. We haven't seen C three PO in a while, and I don't trust this guy. And Han's like. He's a good friend of mine, even though you know it, behind that he's like, I don't trust this guy either, right? Mm. Hey, come to lunch. And the second the door opens, you know they're fucked. Because you know who's standing behind it? Darth motherfucking Vader. And he just stands up. And you know there's no running away from this guy. This guy's the baddest motherfucker. He's the worst fucking villain on, in the galaxy. They're dead. In this one, it's like... They would open the door, show Dooku. It would have been like, who's this? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or Jenga, and you'd be like, who's this? Yeah. Right? Or uh, any of the well, other I people mean, except they, for Sidious. They do do that in the, the scene where it's like, oh, meet this guy. No, they don't do Hands that. Hands over to his armor, and it's like, oh, it's Jango. No, they don't do that. He goes, I'd love... They start touring him around. He goes, I'd love to meet this Jango Fett. And they go, okay. And then we go away for a while, and then we come back, and he meets him. And man, that is just also his son's so a little boring. asshole. Or He's the little clone is a little asshole. Yeah, yeah. Little anyway, so Boba. we're, we're seeing Boba I mean, Fett. We get a lot of really, yeah. we get a lot of really tell don't show here, where we're sort of seeing this stuff, but the the, the person's literally just telling the audience what's been going on. Hey, two hundred thousand tr- troops, they're they're on time. Uh, we're gonna be ready with one million more uh, on the way. Please tell your master Sifo Diaz that the order be ready. Only Sifo Diaz was killed ten years ago. We don't know that. Uh, that sad, but would have been. Uh, uh, but it, oh, she's like, oh, he tells her that Sifo Dias is dead. Why would you tell her that? Yeah. Why, why, why the fuck did you just say that? Obi Wan, do you not know how this is so stupid? Her be like, oh, wait, boy, boy. who the fuck are you then? Yeah. The <laughs> best way they could have set this character up is if in the beginning of uh, Phantom Menace, this is what they were going out to investigate rather than uh, mm-hmm. fucking like trade blockade. 100%. That would have been a cool way to set that up. Hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then she goes, oh, that's sad, but he would have been really happy with the army we built, the clone army built for the Republic. And the scene is weird. Uh, Obi-Wan kind of... Uh, By the way, so who's in charge now, Obi-Wan? Like, um, <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. You heard of Yoda? Well, because he needs Let's to like sign off on this. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, who's... Like, I'd have been like this. Wait, the guy that ordered this is dead? What the fuck do we do? Are we getting paid for this? <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, that's the thing. Us. Like, Who's got the credit card? Did they already pay? I, I assume need, they had to pay on need, yeah, up, front. up front. Then who paid? Must have been Sidious, I guess. Uh, let's Is he see, gonna so, get reimbursed now? I don't know. Uh, let's <laughs> see. Over in Italy, uh, Anakin and Padme t- uh, talk about sand, and Anakin hates it. And we're forty-five minutes in this movie. We've had one action scene. I just wrote that note. Just want everyone to know. Forty-five minutes in this movie. Dude, it was a really cool action. Wait, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, Anakin delivers even more creepy dialogue, and then looks at Padme with a really creepy look, like when Greg, like when Greg looks at us when he knows he's done something wrong, but he's gonna scream and take his shirt off anyway. Uh, then Anakin kisses her, and I can't help but think that again, George Lucas ha- has never actually been in love, or he's a robot doing his best to impersonate human emotions and failing miserably, just like when Greg tries to tell a joke and then ends up crying. I'm not saying Greg is a robot. But has anyone ever actually seen him bleed? Sure, that's a good point. That's a good point. A good Remember that story about his dad getting stabbed through the arm and just pulling it out? No blood? Whoa. Everything perfect? Back on Kamino, we get more exposition about the clones being uh, based off of a bounty hunter named Django Fett who wants to be, uh, uh, who wanted an unaltered version of himself uh, as a child. No growth, acceleration, or tampering with this one. Uh, again, well, they're just they to just, make it more docile. Again, they just these these fucking tall, long neck people just <laughs> love telling shit about. Like, and by the way, and my also my wife divorced me. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Here, 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 here's her social security number in case you want to look her up. Here's my ba- my bank account info. Yeah. Here's all this stuff. My you want, you want to know where fucking Brad Pitt lives? We got his address right here. Holy shit, stop. <laughs> stop saying things, people. Yeah. God damn. Uh, let's see. Uh, Obi-Wan wants to meet Jango Fett, and they're like, sure, we're happy, we're happy to oblige. Why not? Not, meet a son oh, Boba we can't too. do that. Sure, we'll hook you up with them. Not, uh, I'm sorry, sir, we can't do that, so you're going to have to figure out how to sneak out of this fucking room and go find him for yourself. Oh, we'll set it up. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Why does he live there? I don't know. Why? Why? How, Kevin, if I wanted you to clone me, how much of me would you need to stick around a to clone little me? jar, you know? That's it. Do I need to be here? No. Yeah, I could be buried out and back for all Because then we can clone fuck. the clones afterwards, right? Well, I, I mean, maybe he doesn't. I mean, it's, he, this guy's a criminal. It's an easy place to hide. No, but the problem is he's not a criminal. He's a paid assassin by someone who presumably is still in charge of the army, but not because that's no one's in charge of the I mean, he's army. also a he's bounty hunter. He's being paid hunter. by Dooku. Like, he so why is he living job. here? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Why He's, does he have a one perfect clone? Because he wanted a kid. So we can but make Boba Fett. Wants to be a father. You can make a kid. But like, besides easy. the, because he needs to be Boba Fett, like, 
There's no. Oh, there, well, Tim, let me explain a cool to you. Explanation. Let me explain yeah, to you yeah. something about kids uh, that you may don't know because you don't have kids yet. Neither do I. But man, let me tell you, <laughs> they never get in the way of your job. Mm -hmm. So having a child <laughs> is a perfect way to be able to go anywhere you want, spur the moment, answer that call when when money comes through, and just be able to boo shoot off right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the opposite when you have a kid. Yeah. Yeah, you have great. to really be there for that kid. Otherwise, it turns into a psychopath that gets uh, eaten by a Sarlacc pit. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. He does. Down remember? in the field of Naboo, Padme tells anime about uh, her first love and Anakin. <laughs> <Anime>? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Anakin. Padme tells Anakin about her first love and Anakin does not deal with it well. Oh, also, he does But he also, like, really tries to find out. He's like, who's this guy? Where does he live? Well, no, no. It How was like, was it? no, <laughs> but tell, tell, tell me about it. Tell, like, tell me about it. And she's like, I don't want to. Tell me about it. She starts telling him. He's like, I hate hearing about it. I don't want to hear about this. Uh, also, he doesn't like the system. People should be made to fall in love. Line. Then we get an actual real moment. This is one of the ones I was talking about where they lock eyes and he's deadly serious and then they break and, and they have this wonderful moment where she goes, you're making fun of me and goes, I'm, I'm too afraid to make fun of you. You're a senator. And it's a dumb little line, but it's one of the only times where these two characters actually have any chemistry. Oh, my opinion. God. I think that visually they had chemistry. When you think about what just went down, it is comical. Hey, man, uh, Hitler, I just want to be Hitler. Yeah. And she goes, really? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, because he meant it. There's no joke. Yeah, she didn't take it as a joke. Can you but... imagine if a creepy, weird person that you've known makes a joke about like I'm gonna take a gun to the to the bank later? Yeah, I'm gonna shoot up the place. Mm -hmm. He'd be like, oh, like you've shown me weird signs, and now this is like really, really like well, creepy. Just wait until he commits genocide later in the movie. Uh, they ride big animals and roll around the field, and then and then they make out and fall in love. It's just as easy as that, boys. If you're out there, just you know, be super creepy. That's Roll how you go. Uh, back on Camino, Obi Wan meets uh, young Boba Fett first, who takes him to see Papa Jango Fett, who just came back from a trip. And Obi, as Obi Wan quizzes him about Sifo Diaz, Boba very obviously shuts the door, uh, hiding Jango Fett's armor uh, and uh, that we saw in Coruscant. Uh, Jango uh, doesn't know who Sifo Diaz is. Uh, he was recruited by a man named Tyrannus. Cool. Uh, back on Naboo, <laughs> and then that's it. Uh, back on Naboo, and no, I mean this is a scene that has a little bit of tension because these two actors are actually good. And he's like, "Have you been there?" It's like, "I don't know." That. And it's like a cat and mouse game, like you yeah. want it to. And you're like, yeah. oh, "Again, like go? they're being polite to each other." And yeah, stuff. but I, I really like it. There's subtext in this, yeah. scene, which yeah, is nice. Yeah, yeah. One of the very few scenes that actually has that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Back on Naboo, Anakin and Padme eat dinner, and Anakin floats some fruit around, which uh, gets everyone just fucking hot. And he's like, if "Master Obi Wan caught me doing this, he'd be very grumpy." Yeah. What? Yeah, he said that. <laughs> Darth Vader said that. He'll be grumpy. I'd be like this. That just made me so dry. <laughs> that I have like, to get hey, up and take like, a fucking bath. I was thinking of at least giving you a handy later, but like, fuck. I'm not even touching know. it, bro. It might be grumpy, wumpy. <laughs> 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 and then, then, oh, just really quick, jump many, off this planet. How many times has she fucking changed today? Just today, three. Like, One day, three dude. times. Oh man! Like we, you know, it'd be a lot easier to escape if your luggage wasn't the size of a ship. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh my god! <laughs> like, you know how they keep finding you? Your luggage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what's great about this scene is it has absolutely no point. Uh, because we just go to the next scene <laughs> where they're sitting by the fire. Yeah. So let's yeah. reiterate it, you know? Just to, uh, okay. The, the, and then there's a rule of twos in this movie. Yeah. It's like we can't just hear or see things once. We, we got we to gotta hammer it home. Uh, and the blocking on this scene is great because they just, it just starts with the, This is a really big problem I have with this movie is the blocking is that characters are just there. And then they like walk a little slow over to place and then they're just somewhere else. It's just... It's that or it's the walking down a hallway oh, yeah. with CG talking. That's it. That's, That's 90% of this movie. I, and and there, there's some really, really terrible moments where you look at the background and the people walking in the background are not matching up with how the ground is moving. Uh, and on top and of that, it's just really I terrible. swear to God, some of them look transparent. Probably. Oh, like, no, because you can see the actual bloom of like green bad green screen around yeah. them sometimes. Fucking weird. Uh, you are yeah. in my very soul uh, tormenting me. Yeah, they're on the couch it's and Anakin... Professes his love for Padme, and, she, and he's in he's agony because he can't man. have her. And Padme rebuffs him. They can't. That can't happen. You're a Jedi, and I'm a senator. And it, this is. Uh, and if we do this, pretty much nothing will happen because we've never actually explicitly said why Jedi's can't marry or what they. But we get that there's some sort of implication hey, behind chapter names forbidden love. Why there's there. Uh, but we keep it secret. Then we'd be living a lie. Could you live with that? End scene. 
<laughs> oh no! Oh no! It's not the end scene. I'm sorry, because that would have been nice if you ended with "Can you live with that?" But he just goes, "No, I guess nah. you're right." <laughs> then we end the scene. Could you live with that? This gra- this unbelievable thing that you want but you can't have. No, nah, I guess you're right. Let's just go back to being I guess, friends. I guess Apple? you're right. <laughs> God, hocus pocus, space bear, fucking dumb. Uh, Obi sends a message to uh, uh in, in the rain to Coruscant and t- uh, talks to Mace Windu and Yo- Yoda and tells them about the clone army that he found and the bounty hunter they've been looking for. Uh, he asks the council to authorize the uh, if the council authorized the creation of the army and they said no. And Yoda tells him to bring Jenga Fett. I think back, uh, yeah. but it's not 100. percent Bring him back, but the, I was like, I think he's bring him back. We'll question him. him. Yeah. yeah, we'll question him. Uh, turns out the Jedi's power uh, uh, is waning since they couldn't sense the creation of the army, uh, and, and this is actually kind of a cool element that I wish we could have seen more of. Mace wants to tell the Senate, but Yoda says we got to keep this to ourselves. Only the Dark Lord of the Sith knows their little secret, and Yoda wants to keep it that way. So I I like. That they're like, our, something's happening to our power because something else, as it balances out, is causing us to be less powerful and cloud and cloud our senses. I think that's really really cool. I wish we saw more of that. I also like the the actual line that he did. I don't remember it exactly, but it was something along like, at, at the moment we have one enemy, and if we do this, we'll have many. And yeah, because like, oh, they'll know we're because they'll oh, know we're weak and yeah. they'll come after us. Yeah. Which yeah. Is, and I was it like, just feels like cool. a line from a different movie though. Because well, I agree with you. That's great. It's just. Not in this movie, though. What I realized after this scene was that this I fucking hate whole myself. <laughs> movie plays out like a really, really bad soap opera. And in that, I mean that all soap operas can do is put two people on a couch together and tell you what's been going on because they don't have the budget to actually show you these yeah. cool things. And that's really sad. Uh, Anakin has a bad dream that his mom is suffering. The next morning, he tells Padme about it instead of just going there and leaving her in the no, lurch, the next which morning- would have created conflict. But instead, he's just meditating on a balcony, and she goes, what's wrong? Another bad dream? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, another bad dream. What is it? My mom's suffering. I got to go save her. I'll come with. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Shout out to that what? shot, though. Shout out to that shot of the, the establishing shot of him on that balcony. The balcony's cool. I like cool. the balcony. But, Nick, you're right. That scene, it, it's not even a come. Okay. That's where they do the thing of like come, and then it just cuts away, and then she's just with it. This is another like Wait, this they... whole like back and forth is again just such the room, like uh, just yeah. the, everything about how they act against each other is so bad. This this could have been a great moment where we're sitting on in the fucking uh, beginning of Empire Strikes Back, and Leia's like, "Are you gonna stay?" And he goes, "No, I got to go pay off this fucking bounty." And as an audience member, you're like, "I get it, but I want him to stay." But I get that he's got to go. If he doesn't go, he's got a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. If he goes, he has to. If he doesn't go, he's gonna get killed. And if he, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's conflict here. He wants to stay because he loves Leia, but he's got to go fucking pay off his life debt or the fucking badass gangster that he owes money to is gonna fucking ice his ass. He might be dead for all he knows. In this one, there's no reason why he wouldn't leave. She's perfectly fine on this idyllic place, right? Like I don't know. And she, she should have been like, no, you have to stay here. Or he should have just left in the dead of night, being like, oh, my God, I've got this vision that my mom's going to fucking die. I got to go. And she should have been like, why did you leave me? Conflict. Now, I'll go with you. But let me change. Yeah, let me, <laughs> make, let me make sure that I change and make sure that we pack as much luggage as possible. Yeah. Ladies and also, gentlemen, this episode of Pack Your Harley Kind of Funny in Review is brought to you by Away. Uh, Queen Amidala herself would love... Would love this luggage here, <laughs> just like I do. Away creates thoughtful products designed to change how you see the world. They started with the perfect suitcase, crafted with features that make travel more seamless. Now they offer a range of essentials that solve real travel problems. So all you have to do, uh, all you have to think about uh, when you're is where you're headed next, because getting away means getting more out of every trip to come. I've been using this Away suitcase for years now. I absolutely love it. It's the best luggage I've ever had. I will never go back to any other one. Um, I like it so much that I even got the bigger one. And I use uh, one of the little dot bags for my my travel stuff for all my toothpaste and all my other, mm. you know. Yeah, the cool blue one. Stuff. Huh? And it's it's I have the navy blue. Everything's matching. They do such a good job. They have great backpacks that I think I'm about to get on oh. for uh, little uh, oh. travel backpacks. I like love the way away. it spits out that battery. And the, yeah, there's also a uh, in you here. Can, you can bring it here again. It's hard to see. Yeah, go for it. Go. 
Tim, I love that you're it was like a battery tell, pack. I love that you're telling me your, your testimonials, but I need you to tell me more about this product because I I have a really crappy little carry on. That you got to get you got to get this one, man. Uh, there's it's a lightweight and durable shell that's made to last for a lifetime of travel. There's a ton of different colors that you can get. A uh, hundred day trial lets you try any away product on the road. Uh, four three hundred and sixty degree spinner wheels guarantee a smooth ride. It is the smoothest luggage that I've ever used. I love it. Um, and yeah, it has a. a external battery that you can That's just really pop crazy. in there, <laughs> cool. which is optional. And uh, I'll carry on just size to make the most out of the overhead bin. They have a bunch of different sizes, though, so if you're going on a longer trip or whatever, you're good. Uh, for $20 off of a suitcase, visit awaytravel.com slash morning and use promo code morning dur during checkout. Uh, for $20 off a suitcase, visit awaytravel.com slash morning and use promo code morning during checkout. And they're just super cool, man. People are going to be there at the airport looking at you be like, oh, you, you got an away bag. I've seen it happen all the time yeah, to I'm, me. I'm so tired of the of uh, my, my suitcase always like tips over because it has just the two wheels. Yeah. I like the four. This is really cool. Yeah, it's great, man. You gotta love it. You gotta love it so much. And one of those so wheels much. always breaks, and then you just drag it up. Again, twenty dollars off suitcase. Visit awaytravel com slash morning. Uh, next up, this one comes from Untuck It. Thank you, Untuck It, for sponsoring this video. The holidays are almost here, and you know what that means: gifts. And what better gift to give the guy in your life than a stylish shirt that fits just right? Unlike most brands, Untuck It shirts are actually designed to be worn untucked. Untuck It shirts always fall at just the right length, no matter the size. So you look casual and sharp. If you ever seen an untucked button down, they always look awkward because it's never quite the right size. You know what I mean? It's a mess. Yeah, it's a mess. Now, they can solve this here for you. They make it super easy. You just go on. You can choose the styles you like. Boom, they're sending you shirts. Uh, talk about your frustration. Uh, oh, man, my entire life here, I've been dealing with these dress shirts, and I just never never quite like it because I feel like if I, I can't find the size that I like. Cause I always have I, the ones that like cover my butt and stuff. Yeah, it's just, and it's like, like, it's just too much, or it's just a little too short. I, yeah. These are the right size here. Uh, you can go to untuckit.com and use code MORNING for 20% off at checkout. That's U-N-T-U-C-K-I-T.com, promo code MORNING for 20% off. Untuckit.com, code MORNING. And finally, escape the invasion. Kevin? Have you ever wondered what you'd do if you found yourself in the middle of a post-apocalyptic world that has been ravished by a deadly virus inflicted by aliens? Way more than you think. Yeah, I'm I not imagine surprised. that's a nightly occurrence. Not, not yeah. surprised about this. <laughs> this is essentially uh, one of the escape enough. rooms, but uh, you get to do it in your living room. You don't need to go anywhere, so it's great for people like you, Andy. Uh, they just send you a box. You don't every like going month. out. He doesn't like going out. I don't like going out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> every month they send you a different box with a different kind of uh, different props that you get to use, clues to figure out what's going on in this world. There's a storyline going. Uh, Greg and Jen uh, played the other game, Hunt a Killer, that they have. That uh, instead of being like apocalyptic. Apocalyptic and sci-fi is more like true crimey. Ah, okay. um, but uh, these people think that that you guys out there would be interested in this, and I agree with them. This stuff's really cool. My friend Curran you, has played this, loves it. Uh, right now, just for you guys, you can go to escapetheinvasion.com slash morning for 20% off your first box. That's escapetheinvasion.com slash morning for 20% off your first box. Escapetheinvasion.com slash morning. Sounds like a cool alternative like board games. Yeah. About friends over oh, yeah, it's a modern, modern board game, for sure. Drink, drinking a little wine mm -hmm. like that. From a goblet. Yeah, goblet. Okay, Nick. Uh, back to the plot. Back to the plot. Uh, so she's like, oh, you've explained this to me. I delicately understand. I'll go with you. Uh, back on Kamino, Obi-Wan catches up with Jenga, and they have a dope-ass fight scene that culminates with Jenga Fett using his rocket pack to get up on the roof so he can awkwardly aim his missile at Obi-Wan. Yeah. <laughs> this is a perp. This, this shot right here. Is exactly why the prequels and some of the sub subsequent Star Wars stories fail, because they had to get figure out a fucking reason for him to use that stupid rocket on his back instead of just letting it be a cool element of his pack. So how do you use that? I don't know. How's he gonna aim it? I don't know. Maybe he could get up on the roof and crawl down and aim down at him <laughs> and then shoot at him without but falling it, off. It's also like crazy technology. Maybe he just shoots and he goes, you know, up and then over. Why not, Kevin? The kids won't understand how that works. <laughs> they, I remember this. Children know any big loop listen, loop. If children know anything, it's that rockets go in a straight line, and they know the intricacies of an intergalactic fa trade federation and their tax diplomacy. <laughs> Those are the two things that children love. Uh, this scene didn't hold up to me. What? I used to like it, and like watching now, I'm just like, there's there's moments. There are shots that are pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. The choreography is pretty cool. Yeah. But every time you get there, it cuts away to. Obi-Wan awkwardly swinging somewhere. 
with I, really bad I, like flipping CG and stuff. Uh, yeah. I liked most of this. I don't like I'm how it cap. starts. I, like I thought it was cool. There are a couple things where it's like, oh, your hands are tied. Yeah, I know. Your hands are tied and getting pulled over. Why don't you just use the force to get your lightsaber still, you know? Because like you don't need to actually physically grab it. Cause you or use pull your it. super speed, your running speed. Or your, they or forgot your super about that. Jumping. They don't have that anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so yada, yada, yada. Yang gets the best of him. Uh, gets over in a slave one. Obi-Wan, this is the hilarious part of this scene that I wanted to point out. Obi-Wan gets kind of knocked off, swings over, and like lands on a landing, and then just takes an elevator back up. <laughs> okay. How people, fucking lazy do you have to be to have your no, character be like, in order to get back up to that landing, I guess I'll just it's, take the elevator. It's not like we haven't seen him jump ridiculous heights in the right. last movie, but the weirdest thing about that scene is it's the tension where it's like, the one moment of this movie that I felt like, oh shit, what's he going to do? Yeah. Is when he gets knocked off. And he's just dangling there. I'm yeah. like, fuck, there's just water down there. Like, how's he going to get Scary. back? And it's the lamest fucking way of possible. <laughs> Doesn't he just swing? How does he, he get back? He swings yeah. to an elevator. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. I would have gotten so lost in there. <laughs> like, Which elevator is it? Oh, <laughs> I, um, I went down. Fuck. So he gets back up there as Slave 1 is taking off. But before uh, he can do that, Obi-Wan lobs a, uh, uh, a little tracker at it. And it sticks on the thing. And then it takes off. And it's like, cool. I like that. You can tell, tell Ewan McGregor's never thrown a football or a baseball. This is a weak-ass throw. Bro. Well, he's British. Uh, Anakin takes Padme's ship to Tatooine, and then they rickshaw over to Watto. Uh, we get a fun, we get some fun comic relief here, thankfully, because Watto is about to tell Anakin that Shmi has been sold to a moisture farmer who fed her and married her. How? Freed her. What's that? Freed her, not fed her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think he must have also fed yeah, her for sure. a while. Yeah. Too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, I forgot to mention this in the what I liked about this movie. I liked Watto. I love. I Watto. liked. Watto. I, I liked. I him. still think Watto is actually one of the best parts of the I, whole the, prequel. I think there's some cool moments with the Watto where, like, Watto uh, towards the end is like, "Hey, I have some people that owe me money. Maybe you can go put the squeeze yeah. on him." And then he gets scared. Yeah, because I think I think the disguised. whole water yeah. scene was great because like every line of dialogue it adds the story. Yeah. It's building, and it's like a change in uh, like a character relationship dynamic that's cool to see. Like uh, when we yeah. see Jar Jar see Anakin for the first time, it's fucking weird. Yeah. When we see uh, Natalie Portman see him, it's fucking weird. Yeah. This is the first time you, you see the expression in Watto it's, being like, "Oh yeah, oh, oh shit." They had yeah. great He's animation going, there. Yeah, yeah, it was great. The animation of his eyes being there, and, like, and you see it kind of click in his head. He's like, "Annie," like. It, I thought it was so well done. You it's might not, not recognize it, me. I have a hat now. Yeah, yeah. I have a little tin hat. It also, uh, take it beard. off, is a plate. <laughs> it's a bowl. I can use to eat uh, soup and chili out of Yeah, man. Uh, I, I like this scene. I like Watto. I wish that the whole narrative had culminated to this being a bigger deal. Because yep. it, it, if I were writing this, and Lord knows nobody wants to read anything I write, let alone say, but I would have written it so that Watto was a much more stronger, powerful character, and Anakin had to actually beat him. To like to do something because at this point, like we get a little bit of that like comeuppance where he's like, yeah, I used to be your slave, but now I'm I have the power dynamic. But it would have been nice to see that actually play out in some sort of an actiony way. I, I, also, I like it. Kind of endearing. Like there, it's kind of a cute moment as he's well. He's like, I, I, he's like, you want you want maybe come back one day and be my slave again for a little <laughs> bit. Just for like a day. I I like the tone shift of when uh, Anakin starts getting more aggressive and like I feel like. Weirdly, like they did a good job animating Watto to be like, uh, uh, uh yeah, no, 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 don't worry, we'll, we'll get you the info, we'll just go right inside, you know? Yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah. almost they almost made Watto a sympathetic character, which would have been another way to go with this, where like you see Watto is actually like not that like living in dire straits or something like that too. Doesn't matter. We get this, the scene that the, the the big issue with this is that he tells him all these things about his mom, and as the audience member, you're like, has he had no contact with his mom? None. For 10 years? None. And so that's a huge problem. It is written off in this movie because Jedi aren't supposed to have attachment. They're what the fuck are Jedi supposed to do? Yeah, it's weird. It's so like, so the Jedi are compassionate. So the Jedi are supposed to be like compassionate. They're supposed to uh, be peacekeepers. They're supposed to be uh, spiritual. They're supposed to have absolutely zero connection with any human being. Uh, they're also supposed to con people. Like, what is... He can't send a text to his mom. Also, he we've set up that he's a pestilent piece of shit kid who is who is, constantly goes against his master's wishes. It's unbelievable. But this is the back. one thing he didn't do? T- text the his mom and be like, are you okay? The thing that's giving him nightmares? Yeah. For a month. For months. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, yeah. anyway. Again. Cool ideas here of like all of the like what what are Jedi supposed to be doing? All of this stuff of like why don't they have attachments and all of this stuff. But I think again. 
build it terribly of they're slowly I becoming know. the bad guys. You know, like they, know. they don't understand what Jedi's are supposed to like what the good side of the force is supposed to be. And I think there is an idea there. There's an idea there. But it, yeah, much Fucking like a lot tear. of the movie. <laughs> yeah, uh, Obi Wan follows Slave One uh, into the asteroid field, and Jango starts dropping seismic charges like Cool G drops dope beats. The sound design here is amazing. It's mm-hmm. fucking great. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Skywalker Sound. Uh, Jango gets the better of Obi Wan and shoots a blue rocket up his ass. Thankfully, thinking fast, Obi Wan jettisons his spare parts compartment, uh, and it works. Jango thinks he blew up Obi Wan. Nope, pulled the old. Let's just dock on an asteroid trick. Why? How? Why not? It's a good trick, um, dude. You know some fucking bullshit is in the director commentary of this. Uh, Lucas says that, oh, that's where Boba learned that Han was doing that, so that's how he was able to chase him in Empire. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. What the fuck, yeah. man? Because because he, as, but you didn't see it. There was an alluded scene where, as Slave One's leaving, he looks over his shoulder and goes, "I think that's the. Oh, maybe not. How would he know? How yeah. would he know? Also, not to be a dick. This scene's awesome, and I'm glad it's in there. But it was, it shouldn't have been in there. If you had just tracked a person, right? Why not? You got to do the old school thing where it's like, let's get him. No, 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 no. Let's, let's see, see where, where he goes. He's going. Yeah. Let's see where he's going. And then once we get to the planet, we'll figure out the, the larger picture. Why get the mouse when you get the whole herd Jeez. of mice? Yeah. Or whatever the fuck. He, I don't know. Is anyway. this where the tracking through hyperdrive technology is introduced? No idea. Because Slave, like, uh, Slave One lands on Genosis, uh, a planet with a bunch of trade federation. Genosis, excuse me. Uh, a planet with a uh, bunch of Trade Federation ships, and I'm finally starting to get into this. What's going on? That dude, uh, Jenga Fett, seems pretty formidable. I wonder... Oh, no, we're just going to go to the other scene. Back on Tatooine, <laughs> Anakin is reunited with C-3PO, uh, and he meets Owen Lars and his girlfriend, Varu, and Baru. Clegg Lars, Baru, whatever, and, uh, is there too. And Shmi was his wife, uh, which makes Uncle o- which make Uncle Owen Anakin's brother, half-brother, something like half-brother. that. Yeah. Well, step-brother? Step-brother. Step-brother? And Luke's actual uncle. Mm-hmm. I just want you guys to know, if you ever have an illegitimate child, eh, don't hide him with an actual relative because it's pretty easy for people to find. Uh, but why not? Because everything needs to tie into the original trilogy all the time in this. Uh, Shmi has been take, was taken a month ago by some Tuscan Raiders, I think, and is probably dead now. Clegg thinks she's dead, and Anakin, but Anakin knows better because he can sense it, we think. Uh, but instead of filling with rage and ripping out of town... Uh, he has a lovely conversation with Padme as the sun sets, and we get there sh- and we talk in their shadows. Dude, okay. There's, if someone said, "Dude, your mom is dead," I'd be like, "You though. motherfuckers!" And I would just ba- like, "There's no energy to the scene." Dude, so much this shit conversation, here. though. It's just, hey, um, you're gonna stay with these people, even though my task right now is to protect you from getting assassinated, and we're on a planet that's not controlled by the Empire or the you know the Republic. Right. It's but it's a wild, wild west. It's gonna here. be fine. Don't worry about it. They're good people. Oh, I feel it. Also, last time we were here, the baddest motherfucker I've ever seen almost killed us all. But it's okay, because someone else, not me, cut him in half. The, the um, scene's really, really weird, because when they're talking to the to Shmi's a new husband or whatever, and he's just like, yeah, man, I, I got injured, so I can't go down, but like, I've been trying to get better to go. And then Anakin's like, oh, I'm going to go. And he's like, oh, no, she's probably dead already. Yeah. What the fuck? Like, in, in two sentences, you just totally flipped what you're doing. Uh, I do want to get a little... Uh, Abs, rank those abs going. Were they born, born in labs? Now it's time to rank those abs. Was he shirtless at some point in that? Padme. Oh. Wearing that dope blue thing out of nowhere just flashes the camera of just the best abs I think I've ever seen on camera. And we want to put her at number one in the Star Wars? Oh, she's number one, man. Well, she also gets abs way later for no reason. And any shot that she's in with the abs. There's no (laughs) angle that those abs aren't perfect. She looked great. It's it's freaking crazy. And then. Then they go outside, then there's the conversation with them with the shadows, mm-hmm. and like, oh, the shadow looks like Darth Vader. Does it? It looks like Darth Vader's helmet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is this one of those, like, Nick fake things? What? I don't remember it looking like that. But I don't think, it just looks like a person I think you're th- I think you're thinking of the, the poster, poster where Anakin no. was standing there and the shadow is Darth yeah, Vader. Yeah, they remake that in this. Oh, well, I didn't, I didn't come across it, I didn't, like that. I didn't, I didn't, like, I specifically looked at the shadows. Maybe because I was, was like, oh, it looks like the poster, but it didn't look like... Somebody tweet at all of us and send them the, the screenshot of what I'm talking about. It like it's on oh. purpose. Either way, uh, Anakin after but that just nice one long person tweet. after that nice long slow romantic conversation with Padme jumps on his dope ass fucking speeder bike. Where he got that from, I have no idea, but it's cool. And duel of the fates I think it was plays Owens. as he looks real mad yeah, and kind of drunk. You know, he's like. Uh, I might fall off this thing at any time. Sedated. Weird <laughs> look on his face because you can tell George was like, "Look mad. Oh, that'll do." Yeah. <laughs> 
Nope. That does not look like. That does not look. That, that looks like Vader's right. helmet. Head. That doesn't look like Vader's it helmet. That looks like Kylo's helmet. Yeah, that's a little what I was bit. gonna say. Yeah. It looks like Kylo. It looks like right. he's got a man bun like in like the back Vader. of his head. Uh, so this scene to me is an egregious example of why these movies fail. Is Anakin? It's just bad the whole time. There's yeah. no change of him being a good guy turning bad. He's a brat kid that's just bad, and they're giving him the Duel of the Fates music already. Before he did the bad thing. We already know he's going to do the bad thing because they're playing the bad guy music. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is mm-hmm. episode two, which for all intents and purposes is the beginning of Anakin's story because we didn't get Anakin's story in the first right. movie. So Hayden Christensen, this is our introduction to him, and he's a bad guy Man, already. He's, he's already guy. flipped. If he's not a bad guy, he's about to go from zero to about 1,000 fucking miles per hour in a real short time here. But before that happens, of course, uh, ba- Obi-Wan discovers the Trade Federation droid factory and over here is Deku and Nuts Gunray uh, talking about killing Padme. Deku is convinced... Has convinced that ten thousand has convinced ten thousand more star systems to sign up uh, with their cause, while uh, which will give them uh, a, a, a massive army. And then we get uh, and, Duke, uh, and, and Newt Gunner is like, I won't go ahead with this unless her head is on my desk. Yeah, and it's like, how are you still? <laughs> How do you still have a job? Like, how'd that work out for you last time, <laughs> yeah. Nuts Gunray? Uh, and then we get some weird stuff. Where the robot union clan is like, we are here. Not, uh, <laughs> not <laughs> this is no, so the, horrible. The machinists, dude. right? <laughs> the droid clan. No, they said the robot union. Not the droid union. They didn't say the robot union. They did the oh, <laughs> I'm a right. robot. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the Whoa, fuck? Whoa, that's hell, weird. Man. Uh, and then the Iron Bank, I guess, uh, the fucking Golden Bank of the <laughs> Lannisters, whatever, is there as well. Uh, we but the c- guy with the really, really thin head, horrible. The CD. banking yeah. clan. Holy will banking sign clan. your treaty. Dude, his head. Oh, my God. Techno I wanted to fucking the snap it in half like a baseball bat. That's what someone's saying. Okay. Uh, when we combine all of those forces with the Trade Federation forces, uh, the Republic will agree to any of the demands we make, which is exactly what we're asking for. Bring and then bring back free lunch Fridays or we fucking riot. <laughs> what are the demands? Nobody what knows. What do they want? They don't matter. What do you need? They don't matter. You got all this power. What else do you need? Uh, Anakin finds the raider camp and cuts a hole uh, in, mom, in his mom's yurt. Uh, he finds her there tied to a cross. Kind of. Uh, Fucked sh- up, shit. Shmi doesn't look a day over the last time we saw her. <laughs> she really doesn't age the bit in 10 years. They could be brother and sister for all we know. Oops, sore subject. Oh my God. Uh, Shmi <laughs> is happy funny. to see Anakin. Uh, now that she's seen him one final time, she can die. And so she does. So <laughs> Until she does, giving us another scene of the. Uh, <laughs> I love. What? What do you love? What do you love? Yogurt? I what do you love, Tim? Love. Tim, you love cookies? <laughs> Again, rule of twos. Why'd you need to do it twice? I love you. Did you say you love blue? Tim, we know that. We know you love blue. <laughs> God, it's, uh, when Anakin's slaughtering the Tusken Raiders, Qui-Gon Jinn's voice can be heard in the background. Uh, according to Star Wars canon, Qui-Gon's force ghost tried to stop Anakin's rage, but failed. Yeah, well, Fucking he fails because Anakin kills, commits genocide, and man, it escalates quickly. Back to be fair. I killed them. These Tusken Raiders, real bad people. They had her hostage for a month. It seemed like just torturing her. Like, that's fucked up. I get it. Not the kids. But also, we didn't see that. You see what I'm saying? Like, I understand there's an implication there, but it's show, don't tell. We've been told that she was off there. We never see it. We see that she's beat up, but, like, we don't know why. We don't see why. We don't see them taking her. We don't see her suffering. We just see her kind of tied to a fucking thing. We do see her suffering a little bit in the sense that, like, we get flashes of his dream, which was her being tortured. It's a dream. But I mean, it isn't. It was like, remember, Jedi's don't dream. Sorry, I'm looking at my phone because I just had to look at the fucking techno union army again, <laughs> and this guy with this fucking skinny head. What a just a horrible movie, dude. What Actually, I like the design of that guy, but it just sticks out. I it's not. It, it doesn't work here. It looks like an Iron Giant design. No, it looks like a scene from the Clone Wars animated. Like yeah. that's how a lot of these CG scenes look. They look like they're straight up. A two or a three D animated man. like Disney XD show. Uh, back on Coruscant, Yoda feels Anakin's rage. Everything he predicted about anger, pain, and suffering is coming true. Uh, Skywalker is in terrible pain. What should we do? Let's cut away to Obi Wan. Obi Wan tries <laughs> to send a signal to Coruscant, but he's too far away. He tries to send a signal to Anakin instead on Naboo, but guess what? Anakin's not there. Anakin's track signal shows he's on Tatooine, and uh, Ewan's wig is really, really bad here. Uh, Obi Wan sends a message to Tatooine, and R two picks it up. Uh, Anakin brings his mom's body back and shoots Uncle Owen a real shitty look. Like, man, you could have stopped this shit. God, no one's like, fuck you, dude. I didn't know any of this shit was happening. Also, like, you could have stopped this. Why did you fucking wait yeah. till now? I don't know. I just want to uh, get to Geonosis. Anakin is sad. So far. <laughs> Sorry. I'll, no, I'll no, try no, to speed 
leave it I'm up. I'm just like, no, no, no. It's not you, Nick. Uh, Anakin is sad he couldn't save his mom and blames Obi-Wan for holding him back. Someday, he's going to be the most powerful Jedi around. So powerful, he can stop people from dying. Then, he admits to killing all the Tusken Raiders, including the women and children. At this point, Padme should have probably run away from Anakin. Instead, not- she's real cool with it. Like, here's what this should have been, okay? They should have had one night of passion because of the situations that they were forced into. Go- having to run from this assassin and hide out it's romantic, it's taboo, it's forbidden. They don't really like each other, but they're attracted to each other. It's like Egret and Jon Snow. It's, it's, exa- no, that was, he loved there her a lot. a lot of love there. What I'm saying is like, no, they but should, like, no, but like, yes, the first, first night. It, yeah, sh- yeah. it should have been one night of passion. Relax, we should yeah. never do this again. And then after she learns that he's done this, she go, oh my God. I'm running back to Obi-Wan You're to a fucking tell nightmare. Him. I got to go back to this other guy, the guy, that's, the guy that I should be with the entire time, not knowing that I'm pregnant. But instead she goes like this. Hey man, shit happens. Okay, you're only human. Ho's gonna ho. Yeah, dude, you're only human. You're only human. You're only human is the response to what he just did. Now, I don't give a fuck. I love my wife. People get angry. But if my wife That's came back said. and was like, I got angry and I killed a hundred people, including a bunch of children, I'd be like, I gotta call a lawyer. She already has stopped I gotta call a lawyer. Yeah. The Tuscan Raiders thing, I mean... It's true. Do they even have children? Who knows? Uh, Anakin... They definitely did. They showed their kids. <laughs> yeah, they showed little <laughs> tiny children. Uh, Anakin and Clegg eul- eulogize uh, Shmi and Artu, but Artu interrupts them with Obi-Wan's message. They pass that message along to the Jedi Council. Uh, looks like Obi-Wan got attacked before he can complete the message. Thankfully, uh, he got ac- across every single important piece of information so that the audience has no doubt that all the Jedis are coming. No doubt whatsoever. We didn't need all that. Mm-mm. We just needed him, the planet he was on, and oh shit, I got attacked. Yep. Right? Uh, Anakin doesn't seem to really want to save Obi-Wan, but Padme really does, and so Anakin has to protect her. Uh, she wants to go save Obi-Wan, so Anakin What's has to deal? go with her. I don't know. Now like, he's what? listening to the council. Well, he's mad. Now like, he's like, like, well, the council's over. What happened where he's just like, oh man, my father, dude, my like brother, <sighs> this dude that I like spent a lot of time with and I've had good moments with, fuck him. Yeah. No, I well, I, I, I don't think it was I, fuck him. I, I don't yeah. think it was It was definitely fuck him. No, because when she says... Well, I'm gonna go save him. You have to protect me. He he, sh- he shines a smile like, yeah. All right, cool. Like, let's yeah. fucking do this. It's because I think he just w- I think he just wanted her permission. But there was That's a moment where he was. goes, I don't want to like. Th- you feel like he doesn't like Obi Wan. Yeah. And I understand they're trying to create the, the conflict there, but it doesn't work. The scene just doesn't work. I, so there's there's two moments, like one that we've passed over, and the, the one that happens now, where he like, in the first one was the elevator scene where he's like, "Come on, you know I see you as a father," which I thought was just such a weird. Sh- like show Fire. not like or tell not show, uh, and then again oh, here I know, uh, yeah. where she starts out being like, "Come on," and he's like, a, "He's the closest thing to a father that I have." Where it's like, well, you don't want to say that. Yeah, like, again, this these are lines that's a from weird the room, dude. Say, yeah, like, that's a weird yeah. thing to say. That, that first thing that you brought up, I forgot to mention that in what, the elevator. Like, yeah, yeah well, no, they're, they're like walking out, and he's like, "It's uh, he's." It's, He's giving him shit. He's making. Yeah. He's kind of like, kind of jabbing him like, ah, you're a little fuckhead, right? And he's like, come on, you know you're like a father to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's Obi Wan's yeah. like, you're gonna be. Why do I get the feeling that you're oh gonna be the god. death of me? And that's oh the my god, I forgot the about that line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's also being like, kind of joking about it. Yeah. Come on, don't say that. You know, like a father to me. God, oh my god. <laughs> Fuck. I know. Uh, back in course. I stayed center. up until four thirty watching this <laughs> shit, dude. <laughs> no, I had to take notes on it. <laughs> oh, uh, this is hard. The senators it's debate tough. using the clone army to fight uh, the Trade Federation, uh, and then back on uh, Genosis, uh, Dooku comes in to uh, Count Dooku comes in to talk to Obi Wan. Uh, they talk about Qui Gon and how he was Qui Gon's master and all that stuff. This is the this is a scene that's really sad for me, because yeah. what would have been really cool is not knowing. Never having seen Qui Gon in the first one, having Ob- have the first movie be mostly about Obi Wan, having Obi Wan like we've all talked about be mostly pretty much the protagonist of this entire series, and then having Qui Gon come in, his old master who he thought was dead, and have him be like, "No, you don't understand. Like, I'm doing this for a good purpose." Because he actually feigns some level of like altruism in this, but then it's just completely destroyed at the end where we find out that his master is Darth Sidious, right? Which, but yeah. what he says is, "I'm doing this because the Jedi Council is weak." And because there is a dark force rising that I sensed and they didn't believe me. And so now I've gone and created this this like 10 years ago. I started this this ball rolling to create this army. And now I'm going to take control of this. That would have been cool. But instead, he's like, come on, join me. And he's like, no, you're fucking evil. He's like, ah, you're right. Ah, I tried to get you, but you're right. That that would be so cool. How cool would have been if fucking even if Qui-Gon walked in and was like, he thought I was dead. Sorry, that whole shit was a ruse. What's really happening is I know that someone's bad. I just don't know who it is. And I started this ball rolling because I, we've already established, am a character who doesn't listen to Yoda. I just do what I want to do, which is cool. 
But instead, we get this brand new character we've never seen before, who we have one throwaway line in the fucking scroll to set him up, and it's so sad. And then, like, they could have then revealed later, oh, Palpatine was, like, you know, feeding, like, getting, being the main motivation for that, you know? Like, we're... But, like, uh. somebody realizing that Palpatine's around might have been a good idea. Anyway, uh, let's see. They talk. Uh, his wig is bad in this scene as well. Uh, the Viceroy was betrayed 10 years ago and came to Jakku for help. Why not just go to the Jedi and tell them that? He's like, well, uh, the Jedi wouldn't believe me. Okay, cool. Seems like making a big army for 10 years gives old Sidious plenty of time to secure control. Uh, Jar Jar proposes that the Senate give emergency powers to the S- Supreme Chancellor, and everyone is really excited by it. Uh, Palpatine plays it cool. I'll give it back after the crisis, but as uh, but as his first act of authority, he's going to create a grand army for the Republic to take on the Separatists, which has already happened. I'd be like, oh, how does he know about this? Uh, Yoda and Mace have just been replaced and are really cool about it. They're just like, wow, that's the death of us. You want to get some coffee? Yeah. <laughs> like shit. Uh, Mace is going to Genosis to help out Obi Wan, who, by the way, so I want you to understand here, they got a message from Obi Wan at the end of which. He goes, oh, shit, and the message goes off, okay? And then they go to the Senate meeting. They had a meeting to go to. And they hang out for a while. <laughs> yeah. They watch the whole process go. Uh-huh. And, then, and then after they've done nothing to stop this vote from happening of this army that Yoda says this is a bad idea. I have to get an oil change, dude. Okay. <laughs> he goes like this. Oh, you know where I should go? You know what I was thinking? What were you thinking? I was thinking about going over to Genosius to see if our Fuck, friend is we haven't done that yet? still alive. <laughs> oh, yeah. You should do that. You should do that. On the way, though, you want me to get some Starbucks? Let's get some Starbucks. Yeah. yeah we, gonna, we got time. It's going to be a long time. drive. The, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some time. They got to get on a conveyor belt for way too long. Uh, C-3PO is going to be there. It's, it, it, the most action time. for action's sake. Like, we got... Oh, man. It's Dude, just terrible. Fucking terrible. Uh, it's... it's uh, it's. I mean, it's almost like they know Obi-Wan is in no danger. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's almost like they're like, he's fine. Why? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, mean, they, I guess they can sense it. Can they? Right, because they couldn't sense the army. They said they, they said that their powers are lessened. That's true. Yeah, but I guess they can. Find. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Anakin, Padme, R two, and C three PO land on Genosius. Why they took C three PO with them is beyond me. And Padme uh, takes the lead. Maybe we can find a diplomatic solution can to this you, problem. Can you imagine Anakin as they're leaving, being like, "Hey, I'm taking him. He's mine. Like I made him." I'm like, "No, Ma, no, dude. Yeah, like, dude, we use him." Uh, C three PO <laughs> wants to stay behind, but droids will be droids, and R two wants to go help. So C three PO follows. Why not? They just only fucking met. Uh, Ad- Anakin and Padme encounter a bunch of bugs, and Anakin twirls his lightsaber at them, uh, and then they run through a door and get knocked on a conveyor belt into the droid stamping line. Uh, Padme dodges everything, and Anakin kills all the bugs. C three PO is ama- uh, is amazed that machines make machines because he's never. He was made by a four-year-old, I guess. Uh, he had, the concept of a machine making another machine just is unfathomable to him. He gets knocked off the conveyor belt. Uh, it's a good thing the CG looks great for C-3PO. Jesus fucking Christ. God. He gets knocked off the conveyor belt, uh, too, but not R2. No. How's R2 going to get R2. there? How's R2 going to get there, Nick? R2 uses his rockets that come out of his oh, legs. Oh, shit. Remember yeah. his rockets? Just casually get around. <laughs> cool. You, and I'd have been like this. You've had those the whole time? So when, when I've been carrying up the stairs the whole time. When we were at the shot of Naboo, when they first get there, and Padme and Anakin are walking up the stairs, and you see R2's bitch ass <laughs> wobble it up. What, what about your rockets, bro? It's an emergency Padme thing, gets you know? knocked into so a smelting fuel. pot, and C-3PO gets his head cut off and put on the other droid because we need more comic funny, relief in dude. here. Um, uh-huh. And then his body gets a... Uh, they swapped heads. He's, his body's on there, whatever. It's Freaky Friday, only with way less oh, Jamie dude. Lee Curtis. Which is never a good Dude, and, and then never good thing. fucking Anakin's like arm should be crushed to death. Yep. Right? Should be just yeah, stamped into, into that a thing. pancake. Well, he's got the force. But for whatever reason, it molded around his arm. Yeah. It's uh, tinfoil. <laughs> before, before Padme can be burned alive by molten it. droid lava, uh, R2 rescues her. But not with his rockets. With his selfie stick. Yeah. So he just... Rockets over to the thing, and then just this goes, and it's like, why don't you just? Rock? Like, you can't figure out another thing for him. He's got rockets, whatever. Uh, then Jango lands and tells the bugs to take them away, and the bug leader is like, "Yo, we were doing fucking great before you, you showed up. Like, why? We just gonna fucking steal our collar?" And he's like, "Yeah, because I'm the FBI, and you're just a local cop." And they're like, "Damn it, he's right." Yeah, this is my and then jurisdiction. the chief is like, "Let it go, let it go." One of the bugs is like, "Not this time." <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck did Jango back come from? You know what I mean? All the bugs are like, we had this handle. Anyway, uh, before Anakin and Padme are brought out to be killed, Padme professes her love for Anakin. I thought that would destroy our lives. Well, we're probably going to die here anyway. So it's cool that I killed all those women and children back on Tatooine, yes? And she said, we said we'd never talk about that again. (laughs) 
And then the love music plays here, and I love the theme, and it's so good because that theme and Duel of the Fates are great. Uh, they get brought out into the Coliseum, and literally millions of bugs cheer their death, cheer them on to die. Millions surrounding everything of bugs. Remember that because this is an mm-hmm. army of bugs that is up in the fucking rafters. Millions of them. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, you're like, millions of those guys, huh? They're bugs, huh? How easy do those reproduce? Well, oh, oh, you can have one of them can have like 400 bugs in a day? Cool. Let's make a fucking droid army for 10 years. But they only a live for army. two days. Fair. <laughs> uh, Touche. <laughs> Padme. Uh, so as they're getting brought in, Padme takes out her lockpick that we established from Act 1. Uh, oh, no, we didn't. We just never no, showed that before. No. She just takes that out of her bat fucking bat, uh, utility belt. And Obi-Wan gives Anakin shit. Why do they soon. let her keep her utility belt? Why does she have a lockpick? Pick. She's a fucking senator. Anyway, uh, did you retransmit my message, thus ensuring that uh, that there's no tension in this scene whatsoever? And he goes, yeah, I did. Don't worry. Oh, okay, cool. Good. Uh, don't worry. I have a bad feeling about this. Why? We got this under yeah. control. <laughs> don't worry. Mace Windu's on his way, and he's bringing Starbucks. You know, Don't worry about it. They went for a run. Starbucks? Ah, oh, I just got that. Starbucks? Star. Wars. Let's move on. Mm, uh, please, for some yeah. reason, wow. Count Dooku. Oh, fuck just happened. <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to make a dumb joke. Uh, for some reason, Count Dooku allows them to be used as sport, knowing fully well they're fucking Jedi, the most feared and dangerous warriors in the galaxy. But he's like, oh, let's let the bu- the bugs have nothing else. She will die. Uh, and I like, love the uh, what's his face? Um, Newt Gunray. Newt Gunray is like, let's fucking shoot her. Yeah. She's right there. <laughs> yeah, he's like, just no, no, no. Django, shoot her. This is definitely a Dude Simpsons like, no, moment no, no, where he's no, like, no, 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 we gotta have a Bond sh- moment. For, it's like Austin Powers. He's like, no, no, no. Instead, I'm gonna leave you in a trap that is unnecessarily complicated, and I'm gonna leave and not watch you die. Yeah. He's like, we'll just, I'll get a gun and we'll go shoot Scotty. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, back, but. <laughs> then we wouldn't have an excuse to have a tiger from the fucking tiger from Kung Fu Panda scratch all of Padme's midriff off. Yeah, which is the whole reason why this scene happens. Totally, that's a cool tiger. Though. Nice apps. Someone's been working out. Yeah, you know what I'm talking Remember about. You want to get your shit? Get your shit. Uh, Anakin game? uses his force. Let's see. She yeah. picks the lock. It goes up. The shit happens. Anakin uses his force to mount a rhino. He's ooh, and the rhino goes ooh, and he mounts him. Obi Wan stabs stabs at a praying man with a big stick, but doesn't do shit. Cool Padme, sound design on that guy. Remember when he throws it and it just stabs him and he yeah. Crack. It's like, all right, cool. Uh, Padme jumps on Anakin's back and gives him a little kiss on the cheek. I like that moment. I like that uh, too. Then they stop moment. to pick up Obi Wan, uh, but before they can ride off into the sunset, they're surrounded by uh, Droidakaz. Is that how you say that? Yeah. Droidakaz. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. Destroy your droids. Uh, with more, with mere seconds before his friends meet their death, Mace Windu casually strolls up to Count Dooku. In I mean, his hallway. friends are literally about to die. They're surrounded by droids. At any second, these droids could just start pumping them with blaster shots. And you th- you figure maybe one of them could deflect it, but not. The st- I mean, the fucking it's Padme's the, it's dead. It's the Darth Maul thing. Right? Hit him in the top and shoot at the feet. Right. But instead, <laughs> he just walks down the hallway very, very slowly. Uh, and then holds his lightsaber out of all the people in the scene to threaten to Jenga Fett. Who is the most expendable person on this team? <laughs> I'd have been like, kill him. What the fuck yeah. do I give a shit? We already cloned him 400 fucking times. <laughs> 200,000 of them we got in the other thing. You want another one? I'll, I'll give you 10 more to kill. I'll go get more Starbucks and bring it back. What do you want? A latte? And a latte? A frappuccino? Do it on Dooku. The, the leader? Why would you do that, Andy? That's silly. But it's a also, cool why lightsaber. Why would Dooku feel him? It is a cool lightsaber. Also, it is a dope ass purple it's lightsaber. It's such a cool lightsaber. Samuel L. Jackson has said that the words bad motherfucker are engraved on the hilt of Hell his yeah. lightsaber. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, uh, another. It's too bad that's not what his character is at all. No, not at all. Uh, <laughs> another weird thing is you know, you have this clone army, right? And, you know, they got their DNA from this bounty hunter dude. And now you see the bounty hunter dude hanging out with all the bad guys, separatists, Sith Lord. Wouldn't you think. Hmm, maybe we should, you know, not use this clone army, or maybe we just don't associate with the clone army. Like, what? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not saying, like, the Republic, it makes sense for them to vote it in. They don't understand what's going on. Palpatine's But Mace Windu's strength. here and seeing this. Yeah. yeah, and, like, the Jedi are here and seeing this, and they're not putting two to two together of, like, hmm, maybe we shouldn't be using these fucking clones. Like, let's, n- let's get away from this war and, like, see who's on the right side. Fucking then- dumb. Jedis are just everywhere. They didn't come out anywhere. They just poof, appear. They all operate just in the middle of the Coliseum. And they're just everywhere. And they're force pushing. And they're waving their lightsabers around. And one person pushes nothing. And it's great. All hell breaks loose. And so Mace Windu just says goodbye to Dooku and lets them walk off. As he himself gets attacked by uh, Jango Fett. 
uh, and then walks in and is like has all the droid cans, all that stuff. Uh, then million, then okay, then this is the important. What is, thing. What does Jango Fett use to attack Count? Or this is cool Mace little blaster, like flamethrower. No, oh, flamethrower. Flame That's right. Why? Why would? Why well, would? Notice integrations, Kevin. That's true. Uh, and then important to note. Because all hell's breaking loose, and because they know that with nearly probably, conservatively speaking, hundreds of thousands of arms at their disposal, the bug army just leaves. <laughs> Dude, they were just here for the fucking show. They're not I going like this. down I paid for this, this. Yeah. and I, this is not what I paid for, so yeah. I'm going to leave. <laughs> they, are the, they are an army, right? Because at one point, the, the other character that hands in the Death Star plans is like, I'm telling my army to get out of here. So you assume that the bug head, this is his bug army, right? And they were just watching this for sport. <laughs> I gotta be honest. You've thought more about this bug army than I ever have. Or I ever never will. thought about this bug. I've army. never thought about. I would have just been like this. What? But guys, pull the droids back. You're making a it. lot of bug sense. Bug army, though. go. Anyway, bug them up. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, Jenga kills a Jedi with his bla- with, with his blaster again. Uh, these people, these Jedi's. What is the fucking point of training these Jedi's for thirty years if they can't even deflect one blaster thing? It's too so many, many of them are useless. Too many. I mean, they're and literally hundreds see, here. And we see. I mean, future spoilers. They're even more useless in three, but it's fine. Uh, there are literally hundreds of like a hundred Jedi's here, and we've already seen how fucking easily these droids are to take out, and they can't. They all get killed off one by one and surrounded. More Jedi die than Gungans. Yeah. In a very similar battle. I don't... We didn't see too many Gungans die. I don't think... I don't remember a single Gungan dying in that the that fight scene. It's an ouchy time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we get that like, cute little moment here where Anakin and Padme are fighting him off, and he's like, do you call this a diplomatic solution? No, I call this aggressive negotiation. Now that's pod racing. <laughs> is what you know he wanted to say. She's like, don't you fucking say don't it. Don't fucking say we it, talked man. about that. Hey. <laughs> Too many callbacks. Now this is bad pacing. Oh, uh, God. Anyway, uh, <laughs> they all get whittled down to like 10 Jedis and surrounded by the droids. Thankfully, Yoda shows up with the clone army, and it's on around uh, the survivors of Perimeter Create. And then the guy's like, what the fuck did that little green guy just say to me? He, he knows we're cloned to be stupid, right? Like, can he speak in proper English? All right. Uh, Deku takes off, and the army follows. Boba Fett picks up his dad's severed head and looks at it, and it's kind of a cool scene. Which you're like, ooh. No, here's oh, the thing. wait. Yeah, we skimmed over this Boba Fett getting oh, killed. Oh, I'm sorry. Mace Windu killed Boba Fett. Django, Django Fett. Fett. Django so Fett. here's the thing, though. You Cuts said that it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool visually. That's it. There's You don't feel... Yeah. So this kid's no. dad just died. No. Yeah. You don't care. I thought care. it's not kind of cool. Like this kid is picking up a decapitated head. I always, I always like, thought the, uh, there was a deleted no, scene where his head was in it. No, the head, the head flew out. Oh, I didn't realize that. Uh, I always thought he was gonna pick it up and it's going. Yeah, that's and just exactly. Fall onto the ground. Like I thought that was the next scene. Yeah, yeah there's, there's like a yeah, popsicle that's slightly they've like out, freeze just... framed on places where the helmet flies off and you see the head like the cat like. Really? I, I thought you were just fucking around. around. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm serious. Oh wow. Shout out but to like, the book series though of Boba Fett where it starts right after like this scene essentially, and it's all about him trying to sneak off the planet and like uh, become unnoticed and then turn into the the. It's all fake now though, man. But why? It's all you. He's not here to anything bad. He's a kid. I'd be like, I, I don't know what the hell's happening. Like, I, just go. I, this seems dangerous. I'm not going to do this. Yeah. I feel like the next thing he did was like, oh, get in my dad's pocket and get my keys for the slave one. I'll see you guys later. Maybe maybe take my dad's uniform off. No, probably not. No, Instead, I guess I'll just one. go find out where that uniform was made and get another exact one. But no, green. but the thing is, he always seemed kind of down for the danger when he's in the fucking ship and they're like, we're going to kill this guy. He's yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's like, I'm glad it hasn't come up till now. But like, God, he was so annoying. Yeah, Why do sucks. they have to make all these kids? So fucking it's annoying. Sad. Where it's like, yeah, shoot him, Dad. It's like, shut the fuck. Um, Why don't you shoot him? <laughs> so they surround the survivors, and we see for the first time the stormtroopers like clad close up with the armor. And I'll be honest, I like the design of the armor. It feels like de-evolved from the stormtrooper armor that we see in the original uh, trilogy. I always thought it was kind of cool. It has a little hearkening to like the the Mandalorian mask. Which I, thought is I, cool. I really don't like the way the the actual helmet is structured. I feel like it looks. It, it grew on me. It grew on me. It's the like, least cool like though. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like that when they, the original trilogy, every single time they introduced a new helmet, we were like, "Fuck, that's really that's rad." Really and it would scout troopers like, yeah. Whoa. And then go to this, and it's like, it does feel de evolved, and that's fine. But like, why are they CG again? Like, it's just know. fucking, it's weird. Yeah. And also, I just, storyline wise, it's like, I feel like the Clone Wars of what we heard in the original trilogy, what they ended up turning into, it's like, okay, so these are the stormtroopers, but, but then they're not. Like, by the time this is all kind of like figured out, yeah. they're not. We're not using clones anymore. Yeah, now we're using these it, dumb, dumb other people. I don't know. Yeah. 
Everyone, they got to be dumb here because you have to not care if they die. Uh, and Deku's com- uh, let's see, Yoda lands and then picks everyone up and then they go and then Yoda's like, take me to the forward command center. And then when he lands there, he tells them he's told it a completely useless piece of exposition. They're like, well, there, everyone's attacking. We're pushing forward. Oh, great. Yeah, <laughs> cool. uh, Mickey to, Mouse. The, the, the last uh, <laughs> fact I have here is uh, a number of subtle visual clues were incorporated into the design of the shots to help audiences keep track of who's who. The good guys, the Republic clone troopers, always move from screen right to screen left, while the Separatist battle droids move from screen left to screen right. The sun is behind the clones, resulting in a gloomier sky but behind the Separatists. Finally, the missile con- contrails were color-coded to denote allegiance. The Republic rockets have clean white trails, while the Vilnius launch missiles have leave notor- Leave noxious, noxious black, yeah. purplish exhaust. Man, I'm glad someone spent really all happy. the time to think about yeah. this yeah. to make this, you know, <laughs> easier to understand. Yeah. Yeah. This part. There was one guy who was like, look, this movie's going to be shit, but I got to, like, do my job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, then back at the command, Deku's command center, Poggle the Lesser is the name of that character. That's the head of the bugs. <laughs> Looked it up. Just he was cool. I like that. Because <laughs> uh, he got real mad. He tells Real mad. Yeah. Tells Count Dooku he's pulling his bug forces back. I gotta tell my my bug forces to retreat. I mean, yeah, you already did. As soon as the battle started, yeah, they fucking gone. left. I have 70,000 are... cousins out there, okay? Yeah. <laughs> like... I'm related to literally everything. <laughs> Ten of them are my mom and sister. Uh, <laughs> then he goes like this. Goes over to the thing, the little computer, and takes the plans oh, for the Death Star oh. out of the computer. Gives them to Dooku and says, we can't let these fall into our enemy's hands. And then Dooku uh, the turns plan it for on. our ultimate weapon. And he turns it on and we see the, the Death, Death Star. Star. But he has to show it rule one more of twos. Time. Yeah. The rule of two. We saw it the I... first time up there. When it was floating in the yeah, yeah. when it was when it was floating on the I screen. thought it was cool. Like, I'm fine with it too. I was like, oh I'm showing it twice now. This is the start of it. And then we also but, see the the what are they called? The 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 starships that they have coming up that kind of have a Death Star like they're just balls. They I shoot them. Oh, trade the federation, trade federation ships. Yeah, ships, yeah. I didn't, I, I didn't get that. That's. Cool. I just wanted Dooku um, to be like, because one day this star will cause death. <laughs> like, it, like he might as well oh, just no, no, done no, no, that no. shit. That line comes a little later in this movie, and it's uttered by Yoda. And we'll get to that in a second. Uh, this is a huge problem for me because that's a major fucking element that you just randomly introduced. If that was the case, if they were developing this the whole time, that should be the whole point of this prequel. Is that this army? It's not the army. It's this fucking Death Star is being made. But they just kind of like a little again more fan fanfare, uh, or what do they call it? Fiction. Fiction. No, well, whatever. Service. Service. Thank you. It's just fan service, and it's like what the fuck? The army is the reason why you're around here. The Death Star. If you do the Death Star, then it completely deflates the importance of the fucking army yeah, and this whole thing. Chill. They got Starbucks for that. We already mm. Starbucks. It's gonna hit. <laughs> ah, I fucking got you. No, it um, didn't. <laughs> no, I got it. I, with that one. I mean, just because it's not good. It's so bad. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Thanks for clarifying. Uh, he orders the bug army to really thanks. Uh, where they? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, Dooku admits that Sidious is his master, even though we've established that the Sith Lords always come in twos. Fuck you, Darth Maul. Your body isn't it isn't even cold yet, and Sidious is warming the bed of another. He's literally alive still, and he's on this planet. No, no, City is on this planet. So they meet up. He's like, "What's up, man?" He's like, "Hey, master." No, no, no he goes to Coruscant. He's like, "Why the fuck?" Oh, was that later? Yeah, he goes to Coruscant. Oh, I don't yeah. know why I put this note in here. Uh, anyway, Taku takes a scooter <laughs> to the bigger ship, <laughs> while Yoda yells so add some obvious orders to the troops to concentrate all their firepower on one ship, so the other two can just go away. Why they would they shoot the closest one? <laughs> why not shoot the one that's the highest? And then we get. And I then always love that shot, you know? though. I yeah, was, it's, it's I, really cool. It I always love the laser, and then like you see when the power finally gives out. And yeah, it's, it's but really then like cool. the other two ships just go, and they're like, oh, and they got away. Uh, we and get it, a fucking awesome scene yeah. here next, though, where I'm like, oh man, this is cool. Where it's like the fog of war, yeah, and it's just they're just fighting through the dust that's been kicked up, and you're just seeing blasters like go. I'm like, whoa, shit, that was a really cool scene. What's gonna? Oh, and then we're not seeing that anymore. Did you see these guys go down though. Man, like, they, they keep. They're up. just getting murdered, and they're just fighting robots. You yeah. know. Uh, Padme falls out of a ship and lands safely on the sand dune away from the battle and Anakin loses his shit. <laughs> we have to go back to her and Obi-Wan's like, she's fine, dude. Get a grip, like, bro. Dude, relax. I saw her land. She's totally fine. And then he's like, he convinces Anakin to come with them so he can kill the dude who's literally trying to kill Padme. Like, dude, just come with that. That's the guy that's really a threat. And he's like, I gotta go back and get her, man. He's like, she's fine, bro. Um, you get expelled. It's like, maybe that'd be the best for him. Like, why is he in this, you know? Yeah. 
When they catch up with the Taku, he has a dope ass lightsaber hilt. Obi Wan wants them to go in together, but Anakin is a child, so he rushes and gets his balls shocked off. Uh, Taku and Obi Wan have a cool fight scene, and Taku talks mad shit. I I love that Taku's like, like I know more about the Force than anyone, and like shocks, and it like seems like it's the first time that like, no, it it seems like. He's trying to show off this thing that no one ever has Check known about. Power, yeah, yeah, and it's just like, <laughs> yeah. he's so, like, proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like he does, it. And then Obi-Wan just immediately deflects yeah. it with his lightsaber, and it's like, all right, Oh, cool, shit, I guess so. you knew about this. Yeah. It just sucks yeah. into the sword, I guess. Yeah. Like, it doesn't even hurt your hands. Wow, man. Uh, light and light, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, cut over out of that scene, of course, because uh, that's not a, that's a great place to cut. Yeah. Uh, and Padme is found by a clone who has never met her before, yet takes orders from her immediately. Immediately. They're docile. When she who tells the fuck him are you? to obedient. gather all, yeah, all of his troops that she can ahead of the... Cor- yeah. Head of, let's go. We got to go to the hangar. I'm, like, uh, I'm sorry. Who, who the fuck Can are we you? clarify for a second? What is the command structure of this army? Because we had a little green guy come pick us up. We don't know who the fuck he is. <laughs> okay. And then all the all the long-headed people just said, go with them. And they've been our fucking slave masters since we were born four days ago. Because we have accelerated growth. Ten. Fine, we'll go with you. Uh, du- and Dooku- also, the CG there is just so bad. bad. The sand behind her, her acting, all of it is just terrible. <laughs> Dooku gets the better of Obi-Wan and cuts everywhere. him. Uh, cuts him in a bunch of small places. Uh, but before he can deliver the killing blow, Anakin jumps in to save him. <laughs> I hated that. It's very weird. And I never done. understood that. I never understood in any sword fighting scene where somebody puts the thing down low and the lightsaber on the top. How and for Dooku just like slide it over. <laughs> I know. There's no hilt. His lightsaber's down well, here. Well, normally what he would stop him is, is at an angle, right? No, he just put it underneath that. Yeah, he like he, he so put it dumb. here to stop this thing, but then there's like. <laughs> Let me just. Well, normally, but also it, turn it off, go down, and turn it back on. With a sword, by the <laughs> you way. Know? That Dude, that's dead. <laughs> oh, like a Game of Thrones. Oh, so that's yeah, what those little is. things are around swords. No, not like Game of Thrones. What does that make sense? It's it, those little, the little hilt, the little no, rings what, around what them. They got a name. It's the thing, but it stops yeah. the blade from coming all the way down and cutting your hand yeah, off. Yeah, but these aren't swords. No, I know that. These are. <laughs> like, no, none of this makes sense. I mean, he didn't. Not only that, but by the way, just like gone. you got to be a real strong motherfucker to hold the sword out like this and stop someone's all of his body weight from coming down on that, and not just like try that; it'll go right into the both, person's face. Both, both of them will go. go in like, oh shit, we just cut him in a cross section. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? He's dead. Yeah, he's definitely dead. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. And then uh, Obi Wan's like, "Cool, we're gonna get the better out of him now, man, because you're fucking psyched up. Here, use my use my lightsaber." And he goes, whoosh, fucking two lightsabers," cool. and he's like. Midway through, he's like, I have not trained for this. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. It's uh, cool for two seconds, Kevin, and then it's immediately... I am not supposed to be here. I... <laughs> oh my God. I have never done this. But wait, wait, wait. Let's take a moment to talk about how fucking cool Count Dooku's lightsaber hilt Oh, it's dope. Yeah. I like, Why I is it curved? Dick. It looks like a limb dick. Yeah. Ah, I fu- it's I so it's fucking cool. No, no, no. The it's way like he holds dick. it, It's too? like an older dick that's kind of gone. Like, yeah. You know how sometimes they curve over to the left and you're like, well, it's, he's, he's got to use it a lot. Yeah. You guys are all wrong. It's going straight up. Straight up. Uh, and ball. then really quick, in this fight scene, we get the worst shot in Star Wars history of the close-ups. Lights flashing. Of them fucking fighting and you get no sense of what the action is you get a little bit of sense of like oh there's blue and red so Anakin might be pulling from both sides but there's still it's so fucking bad yeah how is that left in the movie I don't know and then he Anakin gets his arm cut off and then forced pushed Why? over onto Obi-Wan I was I was start being fixated Darth, Darth, I was so Darth fixated Vader. on CGI head Dooku like throughout this whole fight I, I just like look at this fucking PS2 pre-rendered cutscene of Dooku's head and his weird hair. That's why they did the shots. They needed to show, like, oh no, it's, yeah. a, it's a person. It's so terrible. Uh, then, when all is lost, and we were just at the, the lowest point possible, we hear the clicking of a little tiny cane come around the corner. And this then Yoda fucking moment. Limps his I old lost ass around shit. the corner. And I'm with Kevin on this one. I don't give a fuck how yeah. badly the scene sticks out like a sore thumb. Who and how it's completely fuck? backward, by the way. Yeah. Because as you get older as a Jedi Master, you don't use a lightsaber anymore. Because you, you, you get more in touch with the power of the Force. Which we've already fuck established in the that. prior movies. Give him his little lightsaber. And let's see yeah. this shit go down. This movie needed this. So badly. They start matching off. And it goes like this. Hey, man, I know I'm taller than you. But let's see who's got the bigger dick. And they just start tit for tat, things flying around, Yoda throws it away, all that stuff. And, he, and then Tuku goes, well, 
It's obvious that this contest cannot be decided by your knowledge of the force. This, oh, this writing is so, so bad. Yeah, dude. guess we got to settle this like fucking homies on the streets, dog. Get out your laser sword. And he's like, all right. But just for a second, to go back to talking about cool stuff. When Dooku shoots way. lightning, which always looks so fucking yeah. dumb when he does it because he yeah. just goes like this. When he shoots lightning at him and like fucking. George like this? George like this? <laughs> George, is he here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll just do this. But <laughs> fucking Yoda, what? The first deflects it, right? And then the second time catches it, turns it to a ball, and absorbs and it. Absorbs it. Holy shit, that's so fucking cool. What the fuck? We don't ever do, see that and shit. I do before. love the really, really quick line of him be like, uh, you have much to learn. Yeah, you know, it's much like, you, have oh, you think and you're the fucking top dog? But that's so you cool. Don't fucking know. It's such a cool concept to me that this much older Jedi is still so far. Of course he is, so because he's ahead. Yoda's fucking Padawan. Did you catch that? Yeah. Yeah. See, so Yoda I trained love, him. He I trained Qui Gon. Qui Gon trained uh, you, and you and or, uh, Obi Wan. Obi Wan trained Anakin. And it's just Dude, like, Jesus ev- do they fuck? only have three people that and are qualified to train? To other train people? And on top of that, like, let's look at the success rate of that. What's Bad. the percentage of people that turn evil? Fifty uh, percent. <laughs> Way too high. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I really like that little like my young Padawan. Like having like, them talk down to that in in that way. I feel like it's such a like douchey little thing. Like whenever Obi Wan does it to um, Anakin. Anakin, or when you will uh, learn. My yeah, yeah, right yeah. and then when. Um, Tyrannus is doing it to Obi Wan, like one step above, Tyrannus. being like, you know, Qui Gon. We don't calm Tyrannus. I just, I, I just wish this sorry. scene had I'm been. Sorry. I wish this scene had been them trying to fight him and them losing, and before he delivers the killing blow, Yoda was the one that saved him. Where he goes and just yeah. can't move his lightsaber, and we, the camera yep. pans over and Yoda's I, just there. I like, needed stop. I and needed, then he goes, "Fuck, I can't take Yoda." Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Bring the pillar down because I know I'm not going to take it. Like, it's like this lightsabers, George. Where'd he go? <laughs> is this right? I don't. Does yeah. anyone flip, know? Flip, 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 flip. A- Which AD? Again, do you know what's going on? Script cool. supervisor. I, it just says. It just says CG. I looked at the script. And it just says CG. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think that there is any moment in in the Star Wars saga that is as equally horrible and cool as the Yoda fight, where him flipping around and stuff. It's like, wow, I, like that's a cool idea that that this would happen. But then you think about it, it's like this is why would that ever happen? Especially that because happen? twenty years from now he dies of old age. Yeah. But also that, but like why, so this is what this tells me. The entire time he's just faking being an old, frail, fragile thing. No, he pulled all his energy together as fucking for this one fight. When it ends, he's like, hey, fucking, yeah. whoo. I just I was like, I just I was like, I've done that shit a long time. Movie, this, these movies continue to fundamentally destroy everything that's cool about Turn the Force. fuck I am. What's cool <laughs> about the Force is that you could be this old, frail thing and still have this unbelievable power in you because you, like, you've mastered this thing. It doesn't matter how big or small you are. But Yoda, uh, I guess it's, hey, this it's movie whatever. earlier set out that he is the best saber person there is. Yeah, so we true. had to see it. Yeah, we had to have that throwaway line. Uh, Deku, it turns out, is Lord Tyrannus, and Sidious is his master. Why isn't he Darth Tyrannus? We don't know. Uh, why would he change his name? We don't know. Anyway, it, it is Darth Tyrannus, right? No, he doesn't call it, him Darth Tyrannus. I mean, like he calls him Lord, like Lord. Tyrannus he calls him Lord like Tyrannus, definitely. At Lord the end. Vader. I think. Yeah, it yeah, is yeah, Darth yeah. Tyrannus, it's Tyrannus, Darth though. Tyrannus. Okay, uh, which is a dope name. Mace, Obi Wan, and Yoda meet up, and Obi Wan has to admit, without the clones, they would have been, they wouldn't have had a victory. And then Ob- uh, Yoda goes, "Victory! The shroud of dark, the dark side has fallen. Begun, the Clone Wars has." Hey guys, you just what's going out on those stars? <laughs> Where's the war? You mean the Star Wars has started to happen? I fucking hate when characters mention the titular line in there. It's, but it's not. It's Attack of the Clones. The Clone Wars, whatever it does, like. But I'm just saying, like that is it, different. Would you call it the Clone Wars? Are you some type of Suicide Squad? <laughs> God damn it! All right, uh, Mace. Okay, uh, just in Are we case, some type of Suicide Squad. Oh, okay. Yeah, just in case you didn't figure it out, that's what this movie is called, the Clone Wars. Anyway, uh, that's why they call it the Clone Wars. Uh, did you know? Oh, I wrote this fun fact. Did you know that until Star Trek: First Contact, which was the eighth film in the Star Trek series? No one has ever actually said the phrase Star Trek before. That was just a little piece of trivia I came up with. The closest they got to that was at the end of uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, the series finale, when Q says, it's time to put an end to your trek through the stars. I like that. Yeah. Just total yeah. non sequitur there. That's cool. Anyway, Palpatine and Jimmy Smits watches the clone army take <laughs> off. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy Smits, bro. Fucking why is he here? <laughs> Meanwhile, back on Naboo, Anakin marries Padme. 
And the and the vows I have to imagine went something like this. <laughs> Do you promise to never talk about those innocent women and children I fucking massacred on Tatooine? And she goes, I do. And then the love music plays, and it's great. Will you judge me when I masturbate movie. while you sleep? All of the, like, and I'm gonna be looking at you the whole time. And, and also, gonna, you can't I'm get away from my me because I'm way there. more powerful than yeah. you. I like the way it feels. <laughs> and R2 like will be there in the corner. <laughs> R2's just cuckolded it in the corner the entire time. Like, beep, 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 get me out of here. God, please pull this up there. <laughs> Jesus. That's great. I killed them all. Is that Michelle Maroon? Not just the men, but the women and children, too. It's bad. It's just like getting fucking thirsty about it. It's bad. Okay. I like when Nick explains me. Ragu Bagu, please. Ragu. What's up, guys? We were ranking the bad guys in the Star Wars well, universe. I'm a rad guy. I believe everybody's involved. Oh, in this shit. One. All right. Um, Including Tyrannus, Dooku. Where should we put Sifo Dias? Where should we put Dooku and Django Fett? And fucking low. Well, who's at the bottom? Oh, it's Honestly, going like, the bottom. just for sake of conversation, bottom. I would add Anakin to this. He's just yeah. a bad guy. And I'm he's sure not, like, he's not the. Bad I get guy. it, but I'm just saying like this. He's the bad guy in the he's next. He's the bad one. guy in the next one. Phantom yeah. Menace had an issue where there was no main character. This one has an issue where not only is there a main character, it's kind of maybe Obi Wan, and then it's kind of maybe the romance. Like I feel like the main character of this the movie romance, is yeah. romance. Yeah. <laughs> the main character, the the bad guy of this movie, just needs to start being George Lucas. Yeah, absolutely. The rank got a piece of shit. I would, so I would put Lucas as the bad guy. For I would this also one. put the CG on the changeling's face. Also, yeah. I'll be honest with you. No, some, no, I th- I actually really like Lucas as the bad guy of this movie. Also, at some point, we all need to start taking responsibility for this as well. So I'm gonna put all of our names as the bad guy in this because we keep allowing this to happen <laughs> to us every single time. Yeah. Uh, rank one is a uh, bubble tea. <laughs> Two Which Vader's, we don't know. We don't really know what that is. It was, it was uh, Boba Fett and Palpatine. Palpatine. Uh, Boba Tea. Bubble Tea. Bubble tea. Oh, okay. uh, number three is Tark Vader. Number four is Maui Palpatine. Maui? Oh, Maul, probably. Maui Palpatine is number four. Where do we put Dooku? Eleven. Dead last. Tyrannus. Dead. Oh, Dead last. Eleven. Eleven. I say right. already. I'm going to put... I'm gonna put a bunch of enter buttons. I also would like to... Andy. I'd like to apologize to Do everyone it, here and everyone watching when I said there's no fucking way. Last week, I said there's no fucking way that Attack of the Clones is worse than Phantom Menace. Well, we're not there yet, guys. We're not that. there okay, yet. We're not there Let's yet. I could review. Seven syllables in the middle. You need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. This movie smells like poo. Nice. It's just that I'm never Not wrong. Poo. So I just wanted to admit when I when I am I wrong, I think it's almost said. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your review in haiku form, just like Suburbanite Slob did. Blumpkins on Naboo, chumping bad guys like Dooku. Pumpkins finally grew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like a pumpkin. Jeremy Z says, Annie was a creep. Dream of Padme while he sleep. Look at Yoda leap. <laughs> great. Fighting Wombat says clones, clones are attacking The CG is distracting Annie is macking <laughs> uh, Daniel Edmond says This movie is coarse and rough and irritating Last act is hype though uh, uh, Yeah I thought you were going to say this fan shit. Uh, But I do like the chorus, uh, chorus and, yeah. uh, Lucas same. Kern says Annie how you've grown She deaf thinking of his bone The script makes me groan <laughs> Um, and then someone wrote this in a little fact. In an early draft of Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones, the name of the Jedi who contacted the Camonians was Sido Diaz. Sido oh, Diaz. Diaz. Diaz, a false identity for Darth Sidious. <laughs> Real clever there. Yeah. Why? Uh, Obi Wan wow. Kenobi claimed to have never heard of him, and Mace Windu confirmed no Jedi of that name existed. In the draft, one instance of Sido Diaz was misspelled as Silo Diaz. To which the name was ultimately changed. So this was supposed to be Sidious? Yeah. In the uh, original script. But that's with this canon. final one in the... Yeah, in the this Sifo, is totally... Sifo this Diaz. Sifo Diaz is this a This is Tom Marvola yeah. into fucking... Yeah. Or whatever, Ben Marvola, Tom Riddle bullshit. So the person that, that did that... that Ten years ago, made the army start happening, or commissioned the army was was Sidious. No, no, no. That it was a different Jedi, then and then changed. and then Palpatine killed that Jedi and then took that like deal as his own. 
He probably manipulated the situation to do that. Cypher from DS was a person. The Star Wars universe. Makes sense. Currently, number one, The Empire Strikes Back. Number two, A New Hope. Number three, Return of the Jedi. Number four, The Phantom Menace. Where do we put Attack of the Clones? Now, here's what I'm going to say. Was that a terrible movie? Yeah. That was a terrible movie. You know? We're all lesser for watching it. Star Wars is lesser because it happened, you know? But so was Phantom Menace. And Phantom Menace? Very boring. Does it have one amazing fight scene? Sure. Does this have a fight scene that didn't need to happen but makes brings a lot of joy to my heart? Yeah, you know? Let's just think about that. Andy from the press pit. Thank you, Nick Scarpino. This movie reminds me a lot of... Uh, I, I want to kind of compare Phantom Menace to... Um, the X-Men movies where we had uh, fucking Magneto and goddamn uh, fucking Xavier. Professor X where it's goddamn the young hot guy Fastbender and fucking what's First, his McAvoy. Face? First class. McAvoy. First class. Yeah. We have two First of those class. fuckers. And to them I compare Qui-Gon and, and um, Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan to. I think they have a really great back and forth. I think that um, when they're on scene, when, when they're on camera, I think the scenes are better for it because... I you know they're just good actors. Um, now in this movie, Attack of the Clones, we don't have uh, Obi Wan really acting opposite anybody that is anywhere as good as Liam Neeson is, mm-hmm. and instead we have a lot of scenes between him and Anakin, and they're really really terrible. I don't think there's anything redeeming about this movie. I think Phantom Menace had, in my opinion, the pod race. And Darth Maul, I think, are really, really cool moments. And this movie, uh, Attack of the Clones to me, is so consistently way below par. Like, I'm talking like two, three out of ten. This movie's so consistently bad to me, where Phantom Menace had cool jumps. Still not a great movie, but it had cool jumps. Yeah. And that's why I put this movie at number 11. I, this movie's so bad, it makes me not want to watch the movie Jumper ever again. Just because Hayden Jumper Christensen and Samuel L. Jackson are in that, it just makes me not want to watch that again, and it's sad. Because you want to watch it this weekend? What of my tell? Okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> um, I would I would agree with uh, Andy on this. I think that this is markedly worse than Phantom Menace, which is hard mm-hmm. to say, hard for me to say, because I didn't think anything could actually get worse than that. But the Darth Maul scenes in Phantom Menace are really some of the only moments in this entire the entire prequels that have that level of like. Uh, energy behind them and this just didn't there's nothing in this that has that comes close to anywhere close to exciting for me it's weird to me i feel like you and mcgregor got worse because i just don't feel like there was anybody else to act against that was equally as good as he it naturally is mm-hmm. and i just felt like his acting from the last movie to this movie is, is a pretty big decline imho i uh, don't necessarily disagree with that but way less jar jar banks in this movie Sure. Mm. Way mm. less. And mm. we, mm. and like, there's less of that annoying factor overall. There are terrible lines. So many terrible lines. But it's just, at least this movie isn't like wildly boring. So the, the, the problem I have with that, though, is I think it is wildly boring. And I think that there's no interesting action scenes as opposed to uh, Phantom Menace. And sure, it has less Jar Jar, but it still has Jar Jar. And the things that it has Jar Jar do are problematic for the story, not just for him being annoying. And on top of that, we also get dialogue lines that are cringier than anything Jar Jar Setter did. And that is imp- an impressive feat to happen. Last week, I was pretty damn sure that uh, I was going to put Attack of the Clones under Phantom Menace going into this. And I was like, I'm going to go into this movie trying to just compare it to what I watched last week, take out any bias I have, and just compare it to that. And undeniably doing that. Attack of the Clones is the worst Star Wars movie so far of us watching this. Phantom Menace was horrible. Both of these, I think, are, are very are actually they're bad movies. There's elements that are redeeming here and there in Phantom Menace. I don't think there are in this. Um, they're both bottom tier for sure. But I feel like Phantom Menace fucked things up so bad. This movie fails most to me because it didn't work with what it had. It's not like it was like, oh man. Phantom Menace was they bad, did what they could. but they did what they could. No, they somehow managed to introduce a whole bunch of other shit that I think is even worse than what yeah. they introduced in Phantom Menace. And anything they introduced in Phantom Menace, they just brought back and pretended that the 10 years didn't happen at all except to age up uh, Anakin. Anakin. That was it. That's it. Otherwise, new Gunray, still there. 
Otherwise, he still cares about his mom. Otherwise, he's still obsessed with Padme. And this so trade dispute choices. war thing still kind of going. We don't know what the fuck's going on. The Senate still sucks. Still talking about similar things. Like um, it's also, I mean, just like you know, not that the second movie in a trilogy has to be the second act, but it kind of does. And like the second act of the movie that we, or the trilogy prior to this was ended on such a fucking downer note that you almost expect this one too, but this one doesn't. You're like, oh, they got an army and they just won. Cool. Yeah, it's, you know, it's just like, what? What? There's no, there's no attention really paid to like the actual ebb and flow of the story arc. It's just whatever's gonna, whatever we want to throw at it, let's throw at it. I, I wonder, think C three PO is as bad as Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, yeah I just don't untrue. know why they needed to have either of those characters in this at all. Like putting R two and C three PO in this was just a giant mistake from the get go. We don't need them. I have other characters. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't make any. No, also, we don't need. What, them. It doesn't why make any sense. Three PO go with them. It. I don't know because he was they like, literally do not explain it. He was on Glowins, right? <laughs> but like, why? Would and you... also, also, there there might be some future spoilers here, but it's a stupid little thing. Uncle Owen owned C three PO, or at least lived with him for right. for a while. In a New Hope, which is just twenty years later ish, maybe, how does maybe he like not recognize C three PO? When he goes and gets C3PO, like, oh, I guess I want that droid. And C3PO's like, I'm C3PO, human cyborg relationship. Well, he's you wouldn't, gold. You wouldn't think he'd be like, oh, fuck, C3PO. You're an I annoying droid named C3PO. C-3PO. I had an annoying bitch named C3PO. Well, I had years. But he's, all, he's also met R2, hasn't he? Because R2 was on. R2, R2 met I understand a little bit more because R2 that he's only seen for like a day. But he, he was working with C3PO, C-3PO for years. No, but like. No, man. Like, but like, that's a protocol droid. There's but a also, bunch of but so no, you guys, he, model. C3PO has personality though. You guys yeah. are missing. And he won't shut the fuck also, up. He has and a he has fucking a name. name. You guys are yeah. missing a bigger, bigger picture here though. Is that it's not, he's not the only person that interacts with R two D two. Obi Wan does. Yeah. Obi Wan Kenobi doesn't recognize him at all. They they go on adventures together in the next movie. I, I assumed that it was him playing coy. It's just drugs, it's like, bro. Oh, no. <laughs> old age. This is just old age. No, like, I mean, he's he's like, just he's like, I want to drug myself out and not remember any of these. He was movies. pretending though, right? I mean, like I don't know this droid. I don't think so. No, no it's, it's they just at least not in the context shit. of the movie itself. Really it's upsetting. Um, yeah, for for level. me, this movie is just as bad as Phantom Menace, but for different reasons. Or it's Phantom Menace, I think, is way too convoluted in this movie a little bit as well. Uh, and boring, this movie, it makes up for the boringness with cringiness, and it's just about what entertains you a little bit more. Mm. And with this one, I'm enter- entertained a little bit more just because of how cringy it is. It, it turns into a, a Mystery Science Theater 3000 kind of situation where it's fun to watch how bad this trash fire is, which is why I enjoy Attack of the Clones a little bit more. And also we get the Obi-Wan stuff, which I do genuinely enjoy, whereas Phantom Menace, it's, it's like... 95% of that movie is fucking boring. Nothing happens. And then <clears throat> 2% is the pod racing and 3% is Duel of the Fates. And that's all that movie is. So that's why I, I personally like Attack of the Clones more, but not it's not a better movie by any stretch of the imagination. So for this, it's like wh- wherever we put it, like I do, I don't care. I really right. don't. Uh, real, real quick, no, I, I just want to say, like, I totally agree with Barrett. Last week, I don't know if I said it on air, I definitely said it afterwards, like, this movie's not as bad as uh, everyone says, I feel like it gets a lot of hate, and it's like re-watching with, like, a more of a critical eye, really re-watching and paying just a bit more attention than normal. <laughs> not being drunk. <laughs> yeah. Man, like, fuck. I, in my eyes, I think it's better just in the same exact sense where it's like, like, the, the prequels are just... At least boring. I'm having fun making fun of this I think that the movie. difference is yeah. when the prequels happen, like, you want to try to care so that you understand what's going on. Yeah. And by the time this movie comes out, you're just like, well, I guess it doesn't fucking matter because, like, the shit they said in the prequels didn't fucking matter. <laughs> yeah. You know? a, lot, a lot of my problem with it also is that Hayden Christensen's so bad. Like, he's so he's a really, really bad actor. No, I mean, no, that's, he's like, not, as though. much as I hate Jake, whatever the fuck his name is, as far as, like, Lloyd. the, yeah, Lloyd, the, the, Yippee! Nothing. There's only a few moments in Phantom Menace. Granted, Phantom Menace is boring as shit. Barrett, you're right. There's only a few moments in that that are like truly like oh, cringe worthy, right? In this, every time Hayden Christensen does anything, I'm like, I'm I'm fucking wanting to turn the TV off. It's that bad. I, I don't I don't think it's his fault though. I think he was given a kind of a, a bad deal. Uh, I'm not like saying a, it's his fault. Yeah, I don't yeah, care yeah. whose fault it is. But at the end of the day, all we have, all we can judge is what's on screen. And yeah. what's on screen is really bad dialogue that comes out of his mouth, yeah. and it's fucking terrible. And uh, and 
a good actor can turn bad dialogue into something at least. Which I we saw, yeah. no, which we no, saw no. when you compare him to well, anyone else. No, I was there that he's no, not the problem. No, the, di- the, not dialogue, the dialogue is not is not great in the first couple uh, Star Wars, but they sell it because of of. Uh, uh, Harrison Ford's ability to just have that fucking swagger, right? Yeah. Uh, Carrie Fisher has a, a confidence in her. Mark Hamill is there. Um, but in this, Hayden Christensen really like failed category. It's noticeable a, a categorically because selling any of this shit. Not only that, but the like bad lines here were Qui Gon's in Episode One, and Qui Gon, Liam Neeson is a better actor, and like I don't but think the writing still is had any a better perf- here. Yeah. But we're, oh, I, we're, I think it's worse. Well, I think it's worse dialogue. I think, the, I and think, I think, writing I think Hayden Christensen is also not an experienced actor at this point. I don't think it was his fault that he no. delivered. No, like he was I still. I, I think I'm tired still. of defending Hayden yeah. Christensen. What, give me another terrible. example of any movie he's been in where you're like, this guy knocked. Out I was of the park. just looking at his IMDb. He did one movie <laughs> called. He did one movie called Glass Houses. I think where everyone always points to that and goes, he's a real actor. But then he did Jumper afterward, and you're like, oh man, Jumper wasn't horrible. I'm it, not going to say it was the best thing ever, but he was not great at that. Movie. Was yeah. Neither was Natalie Portman in this. Neither yeah. is Samuel L. Jackson in yeah. this. It's just exactly. like even and Ewan McGregor fucking, is weak, and like uh, Ewan, Ewan McGregor, McGregor is my McGregor favorite is part too. of this prequel series, and even he's bad. In uh, this good movie. point. Yeah. we'll stop hating on Hayden Christensen. Like again, Samuel L. Jackson is the most boring person in this entire prequel trilogy. That's ridiculous. I refuse to like put any blame on the actors. It is George Lucas who does not know how to direct people. Yeah, but the, the my only problem with going after Hayden Shattered is that he's on camera way more than everybody else. Yep, that's, that's why problem. it's the most noticeable. That's yeah, the problem. That's fair. And yeah, and I think just the love scenes are cringy. All right, so now it's time to to vote. Who thinks that this is uh, better than the Phantom Menace? Raise your hand. Wait, no, I don't. Okay, so I was like, wait, <laughs> I was like, wait what? Kevin uh, and Barrett raise their hand. For like just purely, so general. that means that the new ranking of the Star Wars universe is number one: The Empire Strikes Back; two, A New Hope; three, Return of the Jedi; four, Phantom Menace; five, Attack of the Clones. Uh, next week or Friday, we're doing Terminator: Dark Fate for interview, and then next Tuesday, we're doing Revenge of the Sith. I'm legitimately excited for this. One. I'm excited because I, I haven't know, seen this movie in so long. Uh, I saw Attack of the Clones at RTX in Austin. <laughs> it yeah. was just on the hotel <laughs> TV, and I was like, "Fuck, I hate this movie." Uh, I'm really I, excited for Revenge of the Sith. I haven't seen it in close to a decade, I feel, maybe. Wow. Like I'm that. yeah. so No, scared. that's a lie. I saw it when Force Awakens came out. Never yeah. mind. I'm only excited because I, I feel like I defend it because it is a market improvement over one and two. Yeah. yeah. And people are always just like, oh, they all just fucking suck. It's like, there are elements of that one. Yeah. But we'll see. I, we'll I, see. I, I've I can't always, wait until they right. surf lava for 45 minutes. That's going to be fun. Yeah, Revenge of the Sith did what this movie should have done, is to drag it, the prequel trilogy out of the like hole that they dug themselves into. And then because Revenge of the Sith is trying to dig uh, out of a deeper hole, it's like fine. Yeah. So, we'll fucking see. Yeah. All right, until next time. May the Force be with you.